Welcome in. Oh, there's that familiar. Just like, yeah, just that good wind coming in from the UDL. It's good to have power back. It's good to be back. Back in South in Louisiana, house. yes. Gotta make sure they work. <laughs> Drove up with power. It felt phenomenal. Good morning, boys. Jack is here. Noah is uh, searching for gas this morning. We can help him out with that. Yeah, I, I, imagine. Got, uh, yeah. I, got, I got a little inside tip. Right, we got off the inter- oh, right, we got off the, uh, the plane yesterday. We were, we were on E in the parking gas. lot of the airport, right by the airport gas station out there. No lines. Pulled right up. All good. The one right, right next to BTR. Uh, it's on plank, so you come out, take a left, if you're going towards the interstate, right before you take that right to get back on South I-110, take a left, get up to Plank Road, and on the corner of Plank, and... You love the secret out, Noah. Yeah, directions are here. Um... Valero and Highland, right next to, uh... There you go. University I think, I think like, a lot of these places in Baton back, Rouge huh? seem to be back Yeah, they should be coming back. people getting gas this morning. Uh, oh. poor Katie. Shout out to Katie and crew, David and the family. Is uh, they were they, they they got power back, uh, and then they ran across a uh, some bad business. Generators, uh, generators unlimited. Uh, if you're oh doing, God! Yeah, if you're doing business with them, heads up. They won't return our phone call. Oof. Oh, uh, now they're, they're getting, they're they're getting, getting shy yeah. Yes, it was. Uh, it's a bad experience, and she's been without power now for the last couple of days, and no hot water, and just People. miserable experience. Miserable, miserable experience. I can guarantee you that. I could still find a good time in that house. Their next purchase is going to be what a, a natural gas generator for that house. They're just going to have to put one in. And get and she'll never have this problem again. Yeah. Um, hey, you still have that windmill in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so. It is uh, a Monday edition here of the Jordy Collada Show. I, uh, you found last night, we gave our reaction on a Sunday night, which looks like that'll probably be some commonplace for us. We'll probably be in that slot Great time. Uh, moving forward. I thought so, too. It'll give us a chance to really kind of react to the weekend. The Saints should be in the books by then. We might have Rohan come sit in with us and do something like that as well. He'll be in this morning at 830, supposedly. Mm. Uh, but I feel good about Rose. Yeah, Especially really, after yes. what happened this week, and he's going to want to get his takes out there. Um, yeah. Derek Stingley Sr. will be here at 8 a.m. We'll talk to Sting coming up about uh, some of the issues plaguing LSU. We'll give you our weekend heroes before we get out of here. Uh, but I want to definitely start uh, where we began a little bit last night. We might say a couple of the same things that we said last night if you were watching. Uh, but for those of you that were not here, we'll give our reaction to LSU UCLA. Just the game and the debacle that was for LSU going into the game and coming out of the game. Some of the issues that are now hovering over the program as they move into game week versus McNeese and Ogeron will speak today mm. at his Monday press conference. Is that going to be live today? Right with uh, Mo- oh Mo- yeah, Mo- just Mo- imagine what yeah, he's man, you know what I'm know sure. What it is, dude. Same talking points. Yeah, I know, but his head still has to be spinning. It's on me. Tell the truth, one night. Yeah. Um, right. I feel like we've heard that press conference a thousand times. The At one least that we heard saw it five Saturday times night. last year. Um, some pretty alarming numbers to look at at LSU over the last uh, season, and some of the things that are trending around LSU football uh, under Ed Ogeron here, as it, it seems like uh, they they are dealing. Uh, with a lot of issues right now. And mm-hmm. before we get into it, remember our Coffee Daily is brought to you by Majestic Coffee. Online at deliciousips.com. True Blue Water. Every morning we are uh, drinking uh, True Blue Water, and we're on, their, uh, we're on their drop-off. We're on their delivery route, and you can too, by logging online to trubluewater.com. Uh, all of our phone guests today, which will be Derek Stingley Sr., uh, I believe Rohan is going to try to get in here. Uh, at some point, is uh, brought to you by Metropolitan Health Group. Real doctors, real solutions. Metropolitan Health Group. Remember, uh, get in touch with Charlie Harvey, Jason Ramazan, and everybody over there. And then Papa Earl's, of course, our official spice. Uh, saw Pop over in Los Angeles. Uh, great crew uh, over in L.A. Uh, as far as LSU was concerned. Uh, and remember, we're driven and powered by Go Chevrolet every single day. Uh, for me, the experience was fantastic. Uh, flying out on Thursday with Mr. Fun and his crew. The travel was great, uh, as usual. Very seamless when you deal with Mr. Fun and Jason Ramazan and that crew over there. 
everything taken care of, all organized, walk up, get your boarding pass, get your seat assignment on the plane, clear flight, land the plane, get there, enjoy Los Angeles, go out to a great dinner. Then you use a Jeep now. On Thursday. <laughs> the Jeep was, uh, you know, the Jeep had a little bit of redemption on oh, Saturday. Did, really? You got, Friday. You, got your, you got your feet underneath um, you a little bit. But would never, do it, uh, never yeah. do it again. Never do it again. Never do it again. You live and learn. Live and learn. Um, but, but, but the Cali weather, bro, is just, that is the, that, that's the, the outlier. That's, that's, the, that's the difference. I mean, the, the palm trees, it's the everything vegetation, you think it is. the smells, the sights, the sound, just all of it, bro, is awesome. And it, it's, 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 in the stadium. it's especially to get there, uh, especially to like kind of dip in, dip out, right? Like kind of a Thursday to a Sunday, mm-hmm. kind of pack a lot into four days. Uh, and see, it's Santa Barbara, bro. I feel like I'm a spokesperson for Santa Barbara now. I feel like I'm on the, the payroll you're not. for the place. Um, <laughs> Tuscahoe? Just I'm such just... a slice of earth that you just never <laughs> you never knew about. And it's so beautiful, man. Shout out to my buddy Justin Parnell. His mom, Jean, and the crew up there, her husband, uh, and their family live in just a beautiful home in, in, in the mountains uh, of Santa Barbara and went up there and uh, experienced the city, ate great, was spoiled, uh, drank like royalty. It was, it was, it was just a beautiful. You weekend. hit the beaches. Uh, we 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 did hit the beach. I mean, it's cold, bro. Yeah. I mean, like that is Pacific a different Ocean, type of a little wind. Beach. Like they they're wind suited up. Yeah. You know, sure. I mean, like uh, Gulf, man. I'm like, bro. I'm not. If I got to get into a wetsuit, I'm, I'm not oh, going. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Yeah. But this is when you have to ask, like, you just have to copy whatever, whoever you're staying with that lives there, just be like, all right, what do I need to pack? Like, I'm not experienced enough to know this. You can't look at the weather mm-hmm. and then assume that you know what it's going to be like. Just be like, bro, do I need long sleeve, short sleeve? Tell yeah, me I mean, like, was it cold at the game? After six, the, the game was, was hot. Okay. Now, like, L.A. and Pasadena on Saturday, sun was baking, man. I mean, it was Ray Baker. warm. Yes, I mean, I had a little Jay and... I uh, told him to throw some pants on just to plan ahead. Like, bro, I know it might be a little warm during the day, but once the sun goes down, you'll thank me for it. I mean, it was so hot that I was like, bro, bail on those pants. Oh, you know what you needed is those quarters. Yeah, yeah. That's right, man. <laughs> All right, I'm going to those give it to me. I'll put them in my pocket. Um, <laughs> I hate to embarrass you, little Jay, but we're going quarters zip season. <laughs> but it was just a great trip. It really was. I mean, just getting out there and seeing everything and experiencing just something different and watching LSU play in that stadium. Stadium a little underwhelming, but for the most part, really? man, it was a great experience. Yeah, I mean, it's just... It's an old... Uh, it's, it's, an old it's 99 old body. years. Yeah. 99 years, man. Um, the worst part of the trip, obviously, was the game. And uh, for LSU, I think they wake up on this Monday morning uh, with more problems than they anticipated a- after week one. I, I, there's no way, after watching the game over again and being there on Saturday... There's no way that this coaching staff could have gone through training camp in a week of preparation and thought to themselves that they were any good on the offensive line after watching how bad they struggled against UCLA on Saturday. And I want to give UCLA credit. Chip Kelly, his staff, that team deserves credit because they whipped LSU. They beat LSU in every aspect of the game and rightfully so, are taking their victory lap on social media. If you're not seeing it, LSU, Ed Ogeron, and the program are getting dragged by UCLA and the Pac-12 right now. They're doing everything. Get the gat, go Bruins, another header. I mean, Coach O will be uh, on Tuesday. He will not be speaking to the media today. Because of Labor Day, uh, he will be speaking tomorrow. Uh, to, to, to the press. Um, so we will hear from Ogeron tomorrow. But UCLA social media ha- has totally switched up their entire profile, changed their tone, and has now made Ed Ogeron a meme. Dude, they have a recruiting video off of it. Made an entire video off of it. And really the entire tone of the video is mocking LSU. Mm -hmm. From Ogeron walking into the stadium, threatening the fan that ended up having a black shirt on that Ogeron called out for having a sissy blue shirt on, to the celebration post game in the locker room, to the tune of Get the Gat, to to the beat of Get the Gat behind Mm -hmm. it. 
I mean, everything in that is a shot at LSU football that the head coach put on a tee for UCLA. I mean, a fastball belt high for UCLA just to turn on and knock out of the park. And they've done it. It hits our biggest insecurity. Get the gat with that. Because it makes us feel like... Hype videos. The, it brings back the 2019 flash in the pan, and that gets every LSU's fans insecurity, and they know that, and that's what that video does. Oh, LSU is well, LSU's in walked into it. Because of how many times Ogeron has referenced 2019, which we talked about in the offseason, when have you ever seen a championship coach reference their season, the championship season, as much as Ogeron has done that, mm-hmm. to hype videos... Which at one point LSU was hype probably consider sure. a hype video school. To the head coach being the one that soft tossed and served this one up to the opponent without really doing it. I mean, he just all he did was be himself on the way into the stadium, just show how he has almost lost emotional control of being able to guide the program. I mean, we talked about it last night. When have you ever seen a coach in that setting not give back a reply in that sense, even pick their head up and acknowledge it? Ever. Uh, I, like, I, I'm wondering, curious, if there is one out there, please let me know, and I'm sure that they exist. We've seen players go back and forth with either media members and or fans pregame to some things that may be said or signs or whatever. But the coach who's walking into the stadium leading his team, his whole team is behind him, watching him. Mm-hmm. And that grabs him to a point where not only he acknowledges the comment, but he fires back to the guy and threatens to beat him up. And it says more after. Like, I showed him. And, like, as he's walking into the tunnel, gives, like, a <gasps> like a grunt, like a, I, I stood my ass. ground. Yeah, like, have just a bit of awareness of the position that you're in and the title and seat that you occupy every day, and you think it's the best interest to get caught up in this bullshit? Again? Again with this stuff? I mean, the public relations... LSU played terrible on Saturday. We're 16 minutes into this podcast, into this recording, and we hadn't said one thing about what's happened on the field. Do you know how old that is for Ed Ogeron's bosses? Do you know how tired that has become for the people that are cutting the checks of $7 million annually to watch this guy disrespect the public relations of the job year in, year out. I heard all of it. Had people coming up to me in public asking me, debating me on things that I was saying about Ogeron and his bosses two months ago about the stuff that they care about him and have approached him and his representation about the way that you represent yourself as the LSU head football coach, whether it is right, wrong, or indifferent, there is an understanding when you're in that role, when you're on that job, when you're in that seat, that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, you are on If you are in the public and you are accessible, you are the LSU head football coach. At no time are you ever Ed Ogeron the dude. Never. Ever. There are people that are employed by the state of Louisiana and at LSU that look at that program as a public relations machine. And if you don't understand that, or get it, then you can't fulfill the role. And he has shown time after time that he either is going to disrespect it 
or he just doesn't get it. Because the fact that he's walking around Los Angeles on a Friday afternoon with the newest co-ed to be photographed with, and he believes that that's a good look when his team plays in 24 hours and there's a chance that you could get beat and you've now had in the past this pop up continuously, whether it's in the off season at the Roosevelt Hotel in New Orleans on Memorial Day weekend, on the beach, or during game week last season when pictures are popping with you in a bedroom with another one, to on the beach in the off season. His bosses have talked to him about what that looks like from a PR standpoint. Nobody's telling Ed Ogeron who he can date, when he can date, how he can date, where he should date. It's his personal life, and it's his choice to make. But as the LSU head football coach, you can't be bouncing around Los Angeles on Friday when you play UCLA on Saturday. And look like that. Mm -hmm. Just can't do it, man. What's worse? I was asking you, what's worse? The fan or the woman on Friday? It's debatable. It really is. It's to be debated. What look was worse? The head coach bouncing around town with a sly grin on his face for the cameras or walking into the stadium on Saturday threatening to beat up an opposing fan two hours before the game's even kicked. (laughs) The public relations of the job matters, and I know some people don't want to hear it, may not understand it, and just don't get it. But if you you, you you don't know what you're looking at and you don't understand the business of college football and what it represents to the people that are employed by it, and what just one slight off step in the public relations game can do to the overall monster of the program. I told you this, that same point two months ago, that people around the country are pointing and laughing at LSU because of the PR and the leadership of Ed Ogeron, because he's jogging on the beach with his shirt off and he's bouncing around town with co-eds that pictures are getting out on and some of the comments that are he's, he's making. It, it, was, it was mocked at. Those comments were mocked at so much it, provi- it provided content for some secondary podcast here in the market. They did a whole show on it about how people are not pointing and laughing at Ed Ogeron. Prove it. Where was it happening? Where is it happening? Lane Kiffin's Twitter account. Check that out on Saturday. 550 retweets, 7,000 favorites. Let's see how much views the Jocks videos at. Jocks video has 2.4 million views. And we were saying Up that. Up from last night, and we checked yeah. it at 10 o'clock. And Lane saying- Kiffin tweeted out on Saturday the video that Jacques put up of Ogeron walking into the Rose Bowl threatening the UCLA fan, wanting to kick his ass because of his sissy blue shirt. I mean, just good God. Puts that out there. Lane Kiffin quote tweets that with laughing emojis at Coach Ogeron. At Coach O. Well, that's his friend. You think it plays like it's his friend on social media? That's an opposing coach in the SEC West pointing and laughing at LSU's head football coach on their first playing date he has a, of the 2021 season. Lane Kiffin has another one. Ross Dellinger has a tweet, Welcome to Baton Rouge, California, showing how many LSU fans are at the game, and then the next day after LSU gets smoked, Lane Kiffin just flat out quote tweets it with a laughing emoji, kind of just showing like that many of you went to the game to see it lose. Just laughing. Pointing and laughing at LSU under the direction of Ed Ogeron. We're 22 minutes into this recording right now, and we have still not talked about how bad LSU was on the field on Saturday. Kirk Herbstreet, national media members, are pointing and laughing at LSU. Look at Herbstreet's tweet, first tweet after the game on Saturday night that he called Clemson in Georgia. 10-3 win by Georgia over Clemson. 
pass rush looked unstoppable. Seven sacks against Clemson's offense. Herb Street just said, checking in with the National College football crowd. What's that score out in Pasadena? Hashtag get in front of it was the hashtag from Herb Street on Saturday night talking about LSU. Pointing and laughing at LSU under the direction of Ed Ogeron. Top response is Desmond Howard laughing. Laughing my ass off, smiling, or laughing emojis. Pointing and laughing at LSU under the direction of Ed Ogeron. Check out some of these numbers. You want to talk about alarming stats. LSU is now 2-12 and 12 under O when trailing at halftime. 2-12. and 12. Anybody can, say, can you say adjusting within the game or lack of adjustments within the game? LSU now 1-8 under Ogeron when rushing for under 100 yards. LSU netted just 48 yards on the ground on Saturday. Ugh, one rushing yard going into halftime. One. Facts on LSU, just the bare facts, numbers on LSU. Five and six since going 15 and 0 and winning the Natty in 2019. Program is trending in the wrong direction. And from a PR standpoint, from a messaging standpoint, it doesn't look like anything that's going on within the program is settling in and hitting home with anybody any player because I was there on Saturday and all you had to do was look on the sideline and just look at the body language. You don't have to look at anything that's happening on the field or on the scoreboard. Look at the way that they watch the game. There's no enthusiasm. There's no life. Nobody seems to really be bought in. Nobody had the, the pride to say when that game got close and started to swing to bring everybody together and say, this ain't happening. It's time to get it right. Everybody just kind of disengaged, checked out, wondering. I mean, some of the comments in the post game, I really am curious. I'm, I, I, I really, out loud, I'm not trying to troll here. I'm not trying to be the antagonist. I wonder how, how locked in is this group? or at least the comments from the head coach made it seem like the, some of the same things he was saying a couple of weeks back in training camp about diversifying the run game and building up the run game. He was saying last night that they should have paid attention to in camp, but I thought that you said that you were doing that a couple of weeks back. Mm -hmm. How do you, in that position with the experience that he has as a coach, don't at some point look at your offensive coordinator or offensive line coach and say, hey, we can't run the football behind this group this season. We've got to come up with a different game plan that's going to give LSU the best chance to win. I mean, that dog shit game plan they walked into the Rose Bowl with on Saturday, they can't beat anybody with that stuff. It was almost as if Chip Kelly looked at last season and said, let's see what they fixed. Nothing. Let, let's see. You know what? Let's hit them on these crossers until they can show us that they've made a change on it. Forget the new hires. Forget the new personnel. Forget the transfers. Let's just see if they've coached them up to take that away. I mean, that was a mirror image of what you watched against Mississippi State a year ago. But with an offseason in front of it of people telling you that they had flushed out everything that it calls that stuff to happen against Mississippi State. New players, new coaches, same outcome, same scheme, same life on the sideline, which is just about life less when you watch them play. One game, I get it. But after one game, the evaluation of LSU football is what have you been doing? What's been going on? After all that change and all that turnover and all that messaging and all that rah-rah, it's this? It's can't, call, can't, cross, can't guard crossers and 
still you got compliant you got compliance department taking your running back and your senior fourth wide year wide receiver fifth year wide receiver jumping around on the sidelines waving towels because they were scratched 45 minutes before the game like what what's going on the trip was fantastic I'm so glad that I got the chance to experience that with my son, my girl, all of us out there. It was just a fantastic trip. The memories were great. But if we'd have built this thing solely around the football game, I mean, how pissed off are you if you spent that part of the budget that you can't get back and you went out and watched that shit, bullshit? The head coach threatening a fan walking into the game after he's bouncing around town on Friday looking as if there's no game that weekend. Isn't the bigger takeaway from him acting like that and being in front of the cameras is that he thinks it's cool? Like, he kind of wants that image of him out there? We're coming here to fight. Right, like that's that. what he seems to be wanting to put out. Because even you, you talked about other coaches that have done this, you know, and it's hard to find an example. But think about him in 2018 against Alabama on the Tiger Walk when he's rattling the cages, pushing people in the stands. Like, nothing. as fired up as you can be, and it's almost borderline like he's going to play. That stuff is cringeworthy, man. That stuff but that's is what he wants his image I, to I, be. I know our social media said LSU by a billion after that clip on Saturday, but I said it last night, and I, I'm not putting it off on it. I mean, that's Jack and, the, and, and those guys that are running the social media, and I get it. I, 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 feel, I, I, feel, I, I know what it feels. I know what the, the, the sentiment is. Mm-hmm. But in real time when I saw that, I mean, I was – Side-eyed, like, oh, God, this is cringeworthy, man. This is tough to watch. Like, this guy doesn't have the awareness two hours before the season kicks off to understand that, hey, man, don't engage the fan. Don't, don't go back and forth. I mean, think about if your high school football coach did that. Think about if a high school football coach was walking, and, and who is heckled? more than a high school football coach that is accessible, right? Like when you walk into the stadium, there's 15, 16, 17-year-old kids with their shirts off that are face-painted, probably had a couple of pops out in the, in, in the parking in lot. The truck trailer. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that when you walk through the gate, they want to tell you how much they hate you. Think of a high school football coach looked at some kid or looked at just even a dad and said, Meet me on the field in your sissy blue shirt, and I'll kick your ass. <laughs> Think about what would happen to that high school coach. He'd be suspended, you would think, right? By, by the school, possibly. Definitely, I would believe, by like the organization. Like I would think that somebody would step in. And I'm not asking, I'm not, I'm not calling for this because I know it's a different game. I'm just saying, like, perspectively, Think about what we're talking about. We're talking about the LSU head football coach going back and forth with a fan, threatening to beat him up because of the color of his shirt before the game starts, before the season starts. Like, all that macho bullshit to me is so tired and overrun. And really, what's it accomplish? If you set your jaw in front of the team before the game, like, if I'm playing, I would be thinking, like, that's pretty dumb. You know, like, you're not even playing today, bro. Put your jaw back in place and tell me how to guard a crossing route. Mm-hmm. Tell, tell me who's going into the game on the offensive line when we can't block anybody. Tell me why you're not looking at Kayshawn Butte every time you drop back to throw the ball. They're playing eight yards off him. I mean... Give him the rock. He's a game changer. I mean, that's the stuff that that I... Bro, threatening to beat people up and telling me that you're not a man unless you can beat somebody. I'm not a man and I get out of bed. Blah, blah. Bro, that doesn't do anything for anybody. It really doesn't. I mean, it, it just... We get it. You're tough. Cool. Coach the team. Have them ready to play. Right? I mean, like, at $7 million bucks a, a season, isn't that the task? Isn't that what it's about? It seems like it's 
about so much other stuff. Just coach the group. LSU wasn't ready to play. LSU was 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 disengaged. LSU was unprepared. And it falls at the feet of the head coach. And when the public relations is as disrespected as it is coming from that seat, when you play that bad, it becomes a snowball effect. And all you have to do is open up your social media this morning or look in wherever you find your college football news, ESPN.com, SportingNews.com, Yahoo.com, wherever it is, the big lead, blogs, are all talking about the temperature around Ed Ogeron rising up by the, the, the minute, by the day, by the second. Because the job looks too big. It looks too big for him. It feels too big for him. Where do you ever see that in college football? Like I said last night, even the tough guys in the sport, those macho football coaches that want to let you know that they're the biggest, the baddest in the room, the Ed Ogerons, when else do you see that? from anybody that you see it as much from LSU's guy. We get it, man. You're tough. You rip your shirt off. You set your jaw before the game. Team's not tough. Team looks soft. Team looks like they don't care. They did not look like the five stars. You switch the uniforms, just plain generic uniforms, take off the SEC patch. Pac-12 patch. I'm going with the team. I'm going with UCLA. They looks like the five-star. the stars. team of the Sissy Blue. I mean, they manhandled us. They were flying. That was the difference to me. Well, I just watched the game. was just the, the effort, the intensity. You didn't even get off a block. UCLA was flying around the football field. Daily, we're brought to you here on the Jordy Collada Show by GoFlow, IV, and Spawn. Get over to GoFlow. Today and check out what they got going on on Jefferson Highway. They're online at GoFlowIV.com. Ask them about their memberships. Three month, six month, and annual memberships available. Baton Rouge's premier medical spa specializing in IV hydration, treatments with vitamin infusion. Over at GoFlow IV, it's a medical spa that specializes in IV hydration with vitamin infusion. They're Baton Rouge's premier IV spa and welcome the community over there on Jefferson Highway. Stop in and see them. You can find them online at GoFlowIV.com. That's G-E-A-U-X, FlowIV.com. Book with them online today. Find out about the services and the memberships that they offer right there on the website. Webs- uh, the website's fantastic. Whether you're looking to help with dehydration, if you're looking for skin care, beauty care, athletic performance, hangover cure, chronic illness recovery, stop in and check out GoFlow IV, what they have going. Um, I can't wait to get in. We're going on the every other week schedule, so I'll be in there today or uh, this week uh, over at GoFlow IV. GoFlowIV.com. And with tailgating season right here this week, LSU's got the home opener on Saturday. Um, it'll be interesting. Uh, we're we're going to talk to them about maybe possibly getting out to a tailgate, uh, at least getting into the UDL, uh, but show you their mobile services as they can, they can come to you. Uh, and drop those services off, whether it's at your tailgate or at your office or at your house. Uh, we will show you and bring the experience to you at some point uh, to show you that over at GoFlow IV. GoFlowIV.com. Uh, great work on Friday night from the crew over at St. Thomas Moore. It was awesome. Uh, and Madison Prep. Jack and Noah were down there pumping out some social media between Walker Howard and Quincy Wiggins. Um, you were Poor down there, Walker, man. man. What, was, uh, what, 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 what was it like? My, my biggest takeaway from Walker Howard, he re, he reads the line of scrimmage very well. There's a lot of times where he would see Madison preps out of formation. He would go up tempo and just burn them. Or he had a couple QB sneaks like that. I mean, also the way for him to bounce back. There was probably at least three touchdowns that were dropped. I mean, there were so many balls where it's just bread basket. Yeah, bread basket, and they just drop it. And mm. I mean, it's such a mental game being a quarterback. And it was just like next play, let's get the tempo. Uh, that, I mean, if you bring in the high school football in the state of Louisiana, I mean, man, Madison Prep just wears you down. Now, yeah. off, it's not flashy, but, man, they crack you. And that, that running back, uh, I mean, their quarterback, he just falls forward. Yeah, quarterback's good. Quarterback, he's very shifty. It took a while into the third quarter until he finally got his confidence, kind of had that little high step, and the jukes were hitting. And, I mean, 
they wear you down. They're good. They're good. Um, an atmosphere looked fantastic. Oh, I've never been in an atmosphere like that. It's like, oh my god, this is a high school game. High school football is well, so, a big deal. Someone showed me what West Monroe Stadium looks like. Oh yeah, it's a college. Wow. Um, yeah, we need to take you around and let you see, um, like North Louisiana, New Orleans has got great atmospheres on a Friday night. That was the Edna Carr game. That was supposedly supposed to be, you know, that was the supposed mm-hmm. uh, week that uh, Madison Prep was supposed to play Carr, and um, obviously, tra- yeah, you know, Ida. obviously Ida uh, was was bounced out. I'm going back and forth right now with Tulane about getting Coach Fritz on because of the weekend that those guys had up that in Northern Oklahoma. Oh, my God. Talk about heart. I mean, I, we're talking about some of the weekend heroes uh, coming uh, up here at, at some point. And how do you not uh, include uh, New Orleans uh, Tulane's quarterback, Michael Pratt? Uh, I'll play Rattler. <laughs> who th- absolutely. <laughs> Rattler might be a little low R. Might be a little overrated. I think that might be too. I mean, too. Sam Howland's – I mean, Sam Howell and Spencer Rattler, they were telling you going into the season were the two premier quarterbacks. I know Nevada's got a really good quarterback. but I'd say the premier quarterback is Bryce Young. Bryce Young looked fantastic. Four touchdowns, set an Alabama record. You see how quick he gets the ball out? He looks so smooth. He looks so comfortable. Well, you know, that's where he's from out there in L.A. So we were talking to a lot of people about him. And, and one, of the guys, just, just... one of the guys that was covering the game said he's the best high school player I've ever seen. Um, I believe it. Me too. Me too. After watching him play. Uh, on on Saturday, as as, as Alabama just boat raced uh, Miami uh, in their opening game, but uh, a little bit about Tulane and Oklahoma. I mean, this game was at times it was stretched out, but then it ended up forty thirty five as Tulane charged back with one of the, I mean, what would have been I'd imagine one of the greatest opening weekend upsets in college football history if they were able to pull that thing off. Yeah, uh, and Pratt who. Had a fourth and thirteen scramble that came up just a half a yard short. I mean, it was it was. I mean, it was a half yard. yard. Yeah. I mean, it was a half yard short um, to keep that game going. And Tulane falls forty thirty five. Uh, but what a performance by the Green Wave and Coach Willie Fritz uh, as they were. Uh, I said just why. I mean, if that game was six minutes longer, Tulane's gonna win this thing. Um, I wonder what the mood is as an Oklahoma fan. Thirty one and a half point spread. Whew. If you would have got that money line. Yeah. See that hit? That's a payday. That would have been a payday. What do you want, boys? Drinks on me. Drinks on me. Um, Impressive showing, though, for what they went through and to be able to kind of pick up and move. It was supposed to be a home game for yeah, Tulane. Yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> but they, do a, they did a 2 and one I think. Okay. So they go to Oklahoma twice, and they return the favor by going to Tulane once. But for them to be able to pick up, move, make the trip, and then compete. Yeah. When you're going into with everything stacked against you, and you have – well, the Spencer Rattler, you hear all the hype for him. Maybe he played well Three at the picks. end of last year. But to put on the show like that, I mean, you got to feel great if you're too late in Willie Fritz. Yes. Yeah. It was, uh, I mean, are you kidding me? What Give me a normal week and let us kind what of. What a recruiting pitch. Now. The yeah. momentum and the recruiting pitch that you have now for, uh, for going in, it was, uh, it was phenomenal, man. I mean, that was a, a great opening week. And I hate the fact that Lane Kiffin's not going to be around a night to coach. He's dealing with some COVID issues. I love watching his team play, but. They can't um, put him in a booth. I don't, they can't. I, I mean, mean right? we had Hugh Freeze in a in a dental chair, up, you know, up in a hotel <laughs> with the you, window man. open, and he could coach. You can't get. I mean, don't you think he's worth a couple of points if you're old Miss? I would think so. Or is I he mean, just going to walk you this thing in? I, I don't. I think you got to be you. able to patch in a headset from wherever he is. Or he could do the Bobby V fake yeah. mustache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Louisville I is uh, so Louisville is playing Ole Miss tonight in Atlanta uh, to close out the college football weekend here uh, on this Labor Day, and then uh, Notre Dame, of course, and Florida State oh, played last night, which was a classic man, forty-one thirty-eight. Yeah, we saw the interception live. <laughs> um, He's a stud. Two picks last stud. night. He is a stud. I think that's going on the draft footage. Um, yeah, that's your first tape on there. Whenever Mel Kiper starts talking about you, he's supposed to be first safety off the board. Yeah, he should be. Um, Notre Dame came back in overtime to win the thing, forty-one thirty-eight. It was a back and forth game. Um, I mean, there were times. I mean, I re- last night when we were watching it, it, looked like Notre Dame was about to blow them out on the pick. Right. That's what I said. That, that Notre Dame's about to they're blow about them to run out. them out the building. Yeah, they're about to run them out. Well, and... what happened was Florida State brings in McKenzie Milton, the, the quarterback from UCF, who had the uh, almost life-ending, certainly what seemed to be a football-ending yep. injury. 
and they bring him off the bench. He never comes out the game. He starts leading them down the field like he hadn't missed a step. Guy had played football in two years. Yeah, I mean, there was times where they were like, he'll never play again type vibes. Yeah, that's what the doctor said. He goes, oh, it's a he, medical miracle. Yeah, the doctor said if this man ever walks again, I mean, that's, that's, that seems to be great. I don't see if he'll ever play football again. If he does, he'll be the first. He's out there slinging it around. Sheesh. Uh, Daily, we're brought to you by Go Chevrolet. Remember, check out Nick Richard, Lee Carney, and the, uh, and the entire crew uh, over there at uh, Go Chevrolet. G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com. G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com uh, to get in touch with, uh, uh, with the boys over at Go Chevrolet. Happy belated birthday to um, Nick Richard as he experienced one over the weekend. So stop in and tell him happy birthday if you get out there. Laplace is back open and operating after the storm. Uh, came through and really knocked that community on their heels. Uh, shout out to everybody down there, hopefully uh, getting back. And, and I know it's a, a snail's pace. We were uh, happy to come home to power, and I know it's, um, you know, in, in some areas of South Louisiana, uh, there are uh, a lot of days between, uh, you know, just getting power back with what has to happen as far as rebuilding. So, uh, man, it uh, was so devastating. And that was a part of the LA experience that I think might be, uh, a, a little bit um, underappreciated was the locals uh, in L.A. really, uh, or at least from my experience, uh, really paying attention uh, to, to the social story from people coming up from Louisiana, dealing with Hurricane Ida, uh, and, and really being compassionate about that, and really trying to create an experience from, from their point of view that was enjoyable for everybody at LSU. I, I thought that the UCLA trip will go down uh, even uh, with the game and the way that it turned out uh, as a very cool experience uh, for me and, and and bringing my son and having an opportunity to see that stuff up close was just uh, a really cool chance. A lot like uh, Milwaukee was, a lot like Wisconsin was a couple of years back with the Lambeau experience and LSU and, just being on the wrong side of it. The same feeling, huh? Coming back <laughs> from that game where you're just like, well, they didn't change shit. Yeah. And it, it you know what? It feels kind of like that trip where – a Man, lot of they're optimism so going in. talented. They're so good, but I don't know how they're going to be any better. I mean, like after watching, because there's just the commitment of not improving was was hovering around that team. I mean, they had such a great opportunity to get better, and you know, Les Miles kept kept Cameron, uh, kept Cam Cameron, and promised uh, to change a lot of right, things. Sure, um, you know, and I think that there's a, there's a simple uh, that there is a. Um, there's a, there's a comparable sentiment here with Ed Ogeron. That's what I'm saying. It had to feel very similar. Because, I mean, O knew he had to change some things from last year to really set himself in a spot, um, you know, that things wouldn't start hovering around him. And, you know, I, I can tell you, I mean, there are people that are fed up in positions of power at LSU in dealing with Ed Ogeron and his bullshit in, in public relations. I mean, just his lack of respect or his inability to understand the position and what it entails from a PR standpoint, in my opinion, is, I mean, could be, it, it could be the death of him. Do you, you think, know? yeah, do you think this is his lo lowest approval rating ever, even back to the Troy loss? Yes. Like, people are yeah. more upset about um, this? I, I think that, that, that there were probably points during the first year, the Mississippi State blowout, the Troy loss, uh, there were, you know, there were probably signs early on where people were ready to tap out uh, and were singing against him, but not as much as the administ in the administration because there were so many people tied to him that if they admitted it was a failure, then they were admitting their own wrongs in making that choice. I am the search. Now, you, exactly. Now you've got uh, a new athletics director, a new almost pecking order of power that is responsible for the football program, make no bones about it. Scott Woodward looks at the LSU football program as the golden goose. I mean, there is a reason why seemingly Will Wade has kind of skated from LSU standpoint as really no back and forth between him and Woodward. I mean, when you ask Woodward his stance on Will Wade, when you ask Will Wade his stance on Woodward, it's both very political. Obviously, they're going to say things publicly that, that, that aren't going to, to show emotion one way or the other. But when you hear them talk, it's almost as if they don't really know each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that disrespectfully. 
I'm saying that they understand each other enough to coexist and work together. But as far as like jumping and diving in and talking about one another, it's just very business. It's very professional, right? Because the truth be told, Scott Woodward spends just about every single day in the LSU football department because he understands that the place produces an $85 million check. There's you know a- what I mean? Like it's tied to the biggest financial gain that they have for the entire athletic community for LSU comes out of that football department. And and I'm sure he feels like he has to babysit it a little bit at this point. He has to go in and check and make sure because after last year where it was just sheer chaos, where yeah. they run around, you had Tommy Moffitt come on here and say it was the lowest number of people attending training camps during that 2020 season. Scott Woodward's coming in, looking around, and looking to make a statement. And he's going, what are we doing here, boys? Who, who'd we hire? Where goose. are my coaches? Where are the people that you said that you were going to bring in? What are we doing? Why do I have to come in here every day? Why am I paying you? Exactly. They, um, they have 900,000 followers on Twitter, so I don't think people get, when you say the PR machine, any, when you have almost a million followers, you know how fast... They can catch, like, wildfire. Well, I mean, look at the hype videos a couple of years ago. I mean, you can take it from a positive spin or you can take it from a negative spin. Like, think about two years ago, the amount of positive momentum that LSU had publicly coming in. That was the hottest brand. every week. Yeah, it was the hottest brand in sports almost when you thought about those hype videos and what they were creating and how much buzz and how much goodwill that was doing for the public perception of LSU football. It felt cool it was it was mainstream news everybody was talking about it everybody was retweeting it everybody was showing it on their social media now take that same strength and same momentum and just spin it to a negative tone and that's how powerful it is and if you can't understand and respect that sitting in the head coaching seat then man what are we even talking about I mean, at this point, there's LSU administrators that are truly believing. Do we really have to tell you not to pick a fight with the opposing (laughs) fan walking in two hours before the game? Because that's what this meeting is about. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to, at some point, they're going to have to sit down behind closed doors and address with him that, I guess we have to tell you that you can't do that. You know what I mean? Like... Like you do a, understand like high school kid. you can't engage opposing fans and threaten to whip their ass because of the color of their shirt and call them a name in walking into the stadium. You do, you do understand that. Yes, I do. Okay, because we just have to – now we have to have it said on the record since you've shown that you didn't understand that a couple of weeks back or a couple of days ago at UCLA. I mean, that's as elementary – as what they're dealing with right now in LSU football and have been, right? I mean, like, even all of the, 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 the stuff off the field with the pictures and all of that stuff, I mean, all of that has been addressed. And I know people want to, it's his life. He can, yes, I, I agree. And I'm not here to tell anybody how, when, and where to live your personal life. But you have to know that there's built in, it is baked in to the job responsibility as the LSU football coach that you have to maintain the public relations of the position. And whatever the public relations calls for, and they're different in everybody's circumstance. Some people have strengths that that, that, that drive them this way. Some people have weaknesses that expose them here. Some people are married. Some people are single. But whatever your situation is, there's a baked-in understanding to, look, man, this thing comes with a PR monster behind it that you've got to keep the reins on and control. And it's really easy to do. As far as the things that you say publicly and the things that you do, but you just can't have your you can't be you can't be pictured in on Friday in downtown yeah. Los Angeles day Get before you get your teeth kicked in. It's just that's not going to fly. That's that's not going to be good for public relations. After on Memorial Day, you were laying poolside with another one that that got out. You know because I mean in your contract. 
LSU gives you access to the private jet so many days a year so that you understand, hey, man, get out of sight, get out of mind. Take this thing with your $7 million salary. Go rent a bungalow in some island down in the, in the, in the Bahamas, in the Pretty Jamaica, chase. in Costa Rica that has a 20-foot wall around it and do whatever and whoever you want, however you want to do it. Just don't do it at the Roosevelt Pool in New Orleans on Memorial Day weekend. Don't do it the Friday before you play UCLA in downtown Beverly Hills. Don't pop up in somebody's bed the week of a game on social media, right? I mean, do we have to talk about this stuff? Don't threaten to fight a fan walking into the game. I mean, 101. PR 101. LSU flunks just with flying colors. Do you think that 54 they... minutes into the podcast, we, we spent about the eight game. minutes talking about the game, maybe collectively, maybe. Do you think that they released a statement Tuesday? Do you think he gets out in front of the, the fan interaction? Or do you think it's going to have to be wait till the media brings it up? And will they? I think, it's I think if a, you put out a statement, you would have already done it. So I think you'll be asked about it Tuesday. You know? Do you think he doubles down? I don't know what his response was. Judging from him right now and what we know, yes. But I'd imagine behind closed doors, he's, he's been told, this is how you say it, and this is when you say it, and you better say it. Of just, look, not the way we want to represent the program, the university, the LSU football program. We came out there to do a job, and we failed, and I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Let's move on. I mean, look at the way it's being treated nationally. That's what I'm saying. He has to, it seems like he's going to have to address it at this point. It's everywhere. Um, you, you answer like how you said it. If you double down, my God, it's... I but he just, could. I could just see him kind of getting rolling after kidding? that. Absolutely. Like, I mean, emotions run high during a game week. You know, one to show, you know, how I believe my team should be, and you know, we don't take no shit from nobody. Thirty-eight twenty-seven. You know? I mean, just gave up four hundred and twenty yards to three players. I mean, I'm on Twitter right now. We are just. I'm going through the quote tweets. I how mean, many blue check marks are just? We laughing. talked about Greg Dolchich. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I didn't watch UCLA play a down last season. A down of football last year. And just in diving into preparation and the little bit that we did on the Jordy Colada show, I mean, <laughs> guard 85. Tens and pencils weren't out. Uh, take 85 <laughs> out of the game. Three catches later for, yeah, this right. I mean, good. like, <laughs> this guy's pretty good. Yeah. Well, this so- guy's pretty good. They should probably spot 85. I wonder who they'd use to do that. <laughs> Make DTR throw it. 16 passes for DTR. <laughs> I mean, they read. And th- in today's college football, you have a quarterback <laughs> that goes out, throws it 16 times. You get your teeth kicked in. That's it. You're the, we're on the other side throwing it 50 times. One of his incompletions was the most impressive. Uh, remember when he was in the oh, backfield? Oh, yeah, the bad snap. That was the most impressive incompletion I've ever Sick seen. Sick athlete. Sick athlete. He plays, he plays wide receiver at the next level, I think. I think, like, he makes the team and plays, like oh. Terrell Pryor type stuff. Yeah, he's um, going to have to get a little bigger. He will. I don't know what fact you want to hear first that's more, that raises your eyebrows. Uh, for average yards, so the the tight end, at, guess how many uh, his average yards were per reception? Eighteen, thirty nine. Thirty nine. Uh, wow. You want to know Shard or uh, the running back? He was seven and a half, right? Ten point six. Ten, uh, they were at UCLA average seven and a half yards. Oh yeah, yeah, but I meant yeah, the but, individual yeah. running back. No, he was great. Chardonnay. I mean, like after two weeks, he's a Heisman candidate. He's I, off, I, I, before the before the Hawaii game, I said if you're going to watch out for anybody for UCLA, we said the tight end. I said Charbonnet is a Michigan transfer that was a highly recruited guy. He might be a local factor. kid. Yes, local kid. And it seems like I guess I don't know if LSU got the tape. I don't know if they. I didn't get the all twenty-two. What's worse, the tight end going for average forty? Yes, I mean, that's the, that's, that's the biggest takeaway because what happened last year is exactly what you were trying to stop, which is people running Down the free yeah. and yeah. clear. 
off a reel. There's nobody within 15 yards of all the, of the completions. Uh, I saw Derek Stingley Sr. out in Los Angeles. He and the family were out there watching Seven play. Seven looked great in the uni. Looked great in the uni. Oh, that first looked tackle, yeah. Uni. Yeah, when he came Holy up and smoke, stopped DTR thankful. from going outside, that was a, that was a fantastic play. Um, we'll ask him what he sees, what the problem is, how they fix it coming back here punt on return? the other side. I was going to ask, and, dude, what is uh, that? Yeah, we'll ask him about punt return. Okay. More about punt gunner. Like, is he just out there? If he's not going to be back deep returning punts, then I don't want him on the field at all. Like, I mean, what are we doing? And he's the best player in college football. I mean, put, what, what, what is going on here? And you're putting him on a, on a war field. Anybody can get you if you're, if you're a gunner on punt return. Well, you said at this one point, if you're not even going to return him when you're pinned so deep, just have him there to catch it. Yeah, because the first punt of the game, Trey Palmer muffs it. It's like that's why you have a Derek Stingley Jr., if he's, if he's not going to return it, it, that's fine. But if you're in a position where you're pinned deep and you need somebody to make a catch, he's got the best hands on the team. And he's out there trying to block people. I, don't, I didn't get any of that at all. Like, what? what are you kidding? Uh, Daily, we're brought to you by Falaya. Falaya Real Estate. Remember, you sell your house by yourself and you can save thousands. You get exposure on MLS, Zillow, Realtor.com, and all the major tours, uh, all the major sites, including virtual tours when you sign up for uh, Falaya.com. Barrett Blondo is our great friend, and he started uh, started Falaya.com. Uh, you can get in touch with him today at 225-939-6153 as uh, Barrett Blondo is uh, changing the way that real estate is bought and sold. Right now, he's putting the power in the hands of the homeowner. It is basically for sale by owner, talking about Falaya, on steroids. If you're looking to sell your house this fall, thinking about for sale by owner, then you need to check out Falaya.com. Listing plans start at $399. Visit them online, Falaya.com, or download the Falaya app inside your Google and Apple stores. We'll talk to Derek Stingley Sr. next here on the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com, or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. True blue water, true hydration at its finest. Right now, you're only a few minutes away from getting your five-gallon water delivered to you, just like we are over here at the UDL. All you got to do is log on to truebluewater.com. That's T R U bluewater.com. The website's fantastic over at truebluewater.com. You can get your service and find out how quick it is. You can schedule a delivery, even hop on the billing system right there at truebluewater.com. T R U bluewater.com. Papa Earl's, the fine spice, originating right down here in South Louisiana by our guy Mark Pop Norman. Developed it back in 2018 and won Amazon's Newcomer of the Year in 2019. They pride themselves in having 30% less salt and sodium than the leading brands at the same price point. You can find them locally. Look for Papa Earl's at Rouse's, Calandro's, Matherne's, High Neighbor, and more. Welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show live here on this Monday morning, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Good to be back here in South Louisiana after a tremendous trip out to Southern California. 
out west over the last couple of days. Shout out to Justin Parnell and his crew out there for housing us up in Santa Barbara, which is a beautiful town. Uh, Los Angeles on the trip in, Pasadena, seeing the Rose Bowl on Saturday afternoon and watching LSU kick off in front of a, uh, a really nice crowd uh, down there at UCLA. Didn't work out the way the Tigers wanted it to, uh, but uh, nonetheless will be a tremendous memory for anybody who went out there and experienced uh, that game. I saw Derek Stingley Sr. Uh, sitting at my, uh, right at my 3 o'clock, was uh, right across from me uh, a couple of sections over as the purple and gold was uh, very heavy and thick in our area, Coach, and it was good to see you out there. I got to imagine, uh, forget, forget the outcome. Uh, for a minute here, and we'll dive into all the game stuff and everything that you saw and the schemes and how LSU can improve it. But uh, just the overall experience, I thought, was A-plus just for an LSU football fan. I can't imagine, I can't imagine from a, a family's uh, point of view what it was like to make that trip and watch, watch Junior play. Yeah, we, we had a great time out there. I mean, uh, overall, just being in you know, California and seeing the sight, um, we got out there that Thursday and kind of hung out a little bit on Friday, did some did a tourism thing, um, and then just been in the Rose Bowl. You know, actually, it was my second time in there. I was there for a Super Bowl. Uh, I think it was the Bills and the and Cowboys, I believe. But but yeah, man, that that was that was awesome. I mean, everything about it just looked great. Just like it, it felt like a bowl game almost. I mean, it was just. It was, it was a good experience. I mean, you know, yeah, unfortunately, not the outcome we wanted, but overall, I mean, you're right. The, the memories are going to be lasting for sure. Um, He looked great in number seven. I love one sleeve <laughs> on, one sock up. Looks so Swag was swaggies. their advisor. Looks so looked ready. Swaggy. That shot of um, him mm-hmm. with the Rose Bowl in the foreground <laughs> and it just in the in the <laughs> stadium was a great. Framer. That's a framer. Um the the play he made on DTR, I think, will be on loop on draft day. Uh him coming up and, and, and not allowing them to get outside. What did you think overall from from, from his play on Saturday? I I thought he played great, to be honest. I know um gonna have some people, I guess I could say that, that's probably going to say something about the, the one catch. And, you know, but the, the problem I have with that, that, you know, everybody sees the catch and they see the touchdown, they see the, the, uh, the missed tackle, but they don't understand the overall scheme behind that. All they see is, oh, that was man coverage. Yeah, it, it was it was man coverage, but it was safety help to the inside coverage, to where he has everything coming to the corner. If there's a post that runs away from him, uh-huh. that means that the safety should be there to cut it off. And unfortunately, the safety wasn't there. The safety got there towards the end when they were trying to make a play out of bounds, or okay, at least get him out of bounds or make a tackle, and they both got tripped up, and then the guy scored. But what you're going to hear about is the fact that Seven gave up a touchdown in man coverage, mm-hmm. but they don't understand the whole technique and the discipline behind the defense. So, you know, those type things, that's what really gets at me because you got all these people. Because I'm going to keep saying people because I know this is a radio show. I could use other words. Uh, on this one, you can speak You can speak freely. This is We're on digital, um, so you can speak as freely as you want. Get all the freaking idiots that uh-huh. don't understand football, but just see it as from a fan point of view, they're just going to look at it as the fact that that's a negative play. It's a negative play because it was a touchdown. But if you don't understand the whole concept behind it, it shut the else up, to uh-huh. be honest. Yeah. Uh, Derek, so, seen outside of that, outside of that, I, I thought he played great. I, I, I thought the secondary played great, to be honest. I mean, there was some, there were some things that didn't go right within, like some run fit um, from some of the safeties, and and you know, but that's just over pursuing, trying to make, you know, trying to be aggressive, and um, you know, just, just just trying to make plays. But you know, we we do have to do better from the D line, linebacker play. Um, it's not that. It, Truth be told, it may look like last year deal where we were not in good positions to make plays or or always chasing plays. Um, 
you know, UCLA, they, they had an opportunity to play week one. Mm-hmm. They had an opportunity to, you know, get their kinks out, although they played a lesser team than LSU. And, and naturally, you know, I thought that LSU, we had way more talent. It's just that they were able to, to get those things out, and we were a step behind on certain things. In my opinion, I thought the defense played great early on in the first half. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought the offense struggled a little bit. But then come second half, I thought the offense played great and defense struggled a little bit. But if we had to put those two together at some point, I think if offense would have took advantage of some of the defensive stops in the first mm-hmm. first half, we're looking at a total different game possibly. You know, it, it could be UCLA is playing catch-up or it's a back-and-forth game. Or, you know, we could have just – been dominant the whole entire game. But unfortunately, it just didn't work itself out. You know, I think Jay being out, um, when he got out, I think that kind of changed a little bit because Jay was, he was there practicing the whole entire, you know, spring training camp, you know, leading up to this week, and he looked great. And then all of a sudden, he wasn't there. I'm not sure what his injury was. I talked to him after the game. He looked fine. No, he didn't know if it was a concussion, but he said that they had to take him out. But, you know, with that being said, yeah, a loss is a loss. You you don't want a loss. You you want to freaking win the first game, especially coming off of last year's deal. But, okay, is, is the season over? Are, are we packing up? I just need to know, are we packing up? Right. Because right. If, if so, then we can pack up. When I say we, meaning – my family, we can pack up. That's how everybody's looking at it. Because it's not freaking over. But if they want to live on that, if they want to live on this one loss, I get it, college football. You can't lose a game to try to win, to try to get to the championship. But there's a lot of things that can fall into place where you can get into the championship with the loss. How is, uh, how is Seven's mindset? How is, how is Junior going? At, wh- he was pissed. Yeah. He was pissed. He, he don't want to lose. He was pissed. He was he was pissed about a lot. He was pissed about the performance of, of the overall team. He was pissed about the fact that why are we in man coverage in third and twenty two? Yeah. yeah, you know, but but that's that's him. You know, he don't he he never liked to lose. He's a true competitor. You know, I saw. My son completely upset after the game. Completely. So for someone to say the, the, the another freaking or uh, the other idiot football fan that don't get it to say that he gives up or he gave up on something, my son don't give up on anything. He did the best he can do. So he comes to me after the game mad. Does that sound like someone is giving up? Right. Just pissed off about freaking loss. Some people should be so lucky because I could, I can make it to where I could piss somebody off. I really could. I hold this power. Coach Derek Stingley Senior joining us here on the Jordy Colada Show, uh, touching base with him on this Monday morning, just like we will every week on a Monday, uh, to get his thoughts. Obviously, after a a tough loss for LSU, moving into McNeese. Game week, coach. Just from a uh, a coaching standpoint, uh, when, when your defense is giving up crossing routes, what's what's the usual adjustment from just a defensive coach? How do you take that away? Because it seems like over the last two openers, last year versus Mississippi State, which I know Derek was not on the field for, but over the weekend, um, it seems like as a unit they've been chopped up by crossing routes. What's what's the remedy on that from a coaching standpoint? Well, I mean, you, you have to look at this game plan going uh-huh. into this, this game. It was like what what they saw on film and what everyone's seen in the previous years from the UCLA quarterback was that, you know, he just wasn't an accurate, accurate passer. And we knew coming into this game because of what they did against Hawaii that they were going to run the ball. So what you do from there is you load the box and you dare them to throw it. And, and yeah, you're going to have Elias and Derek on the corners, but then you – you know, you're going to have a nickelback and possibly a linebacker in coverage most of the time. So, 
yeah, they took advantage of that because that was our our game plan, and maybe we should adjust it a little bit more, and to the point where, you know, the way you you stop those crossing routes is now you you change up you 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 start running some form of zone or, or robber type coverage where you, where you sit someone in the middle of the of, of the field to take yeah. away those crosses, the deep crosses, or, or or just like the Elias pick that was his own play where. He was sitting underneath, and the quarterback didn't see it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so right. he was there to take it away, and that's how you take it away, you know. But but you know, UCLA was doing what they were doing by running the ball. And, and don't get me wrong, I thought that that was a good good game plan to say, you know, throw it. Mm-hmm. We don't believe you can make those plays. And then yeah, he he complete eight ten yard crossing routes, but then yeah, they run for another twenty. You know, uh, it's not like there were deep balls thrown. I mean, I think the one deep ball that he threw was overthrown. And it was, we were in some form of zone, but, you know, if if he throw it where he needs to throw it, that could be another big play. Uh, so, good. Yeah, no, I was just saying that the best way to take away crosses are, are you, you got to play some form of zone. You got to let them run through the zone. But the, the quarter, I mean, the DBs and the secondary have to have vision on the quarterback to try to undercut those throws. What, what was the effect of first-time play callers, in your opinion? What, what's it like to be a, a play caller on that stage on both sides? LSU's offense and defensive play callers were, were first-timers. Um, what type of effect do you think that had on, on Saturday? Um, I, I, I think it was a, to the point where you know, they've been calling plays in practice where, you know, you're not as live as you want to be. Uh-huh. Or, and you even call plays in, in scrimmages where those plays are scripted most of the time to where offense may have the defensive script and defense may have the offensive script. They just want to get a look at a certain guy at a certain position to see what's going on. But now when you're actually going up against live bullet and then you have to make some adjustments, Sometimes it's, it's a little difficult when you're not really, you know, you don't have the, the true understanding of the player or, or the talent that you have. You know you know what they're capable of, but then now the bullets are really flying. Now you have to see how they adjust when, when you know, you got emotion involved in it. You've got, you know, the physicality that's, that's being brought to the game. All that matters to where you just can't think of it like as a, as a as a video game type feel like you can call this play and it's going to work. You have to understand that maybe this guy he he's worrying about this. He could be worrying about the pass rush, supposedly looking downfield. Maybe he could be worrying about you know the run game instead of rushing the passer. You know those things. So once they, I think this this game here probably will give them the opportunity to 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 feel that within the players that they have to the point where. Now, game planning moving forward, they would know how to make those mid-game adjustments, or those in-game adjustments, to the point where they may say, "You know what? I can't, I can't throw that. I can't make him throw that pass again. I have to give him this. I have to give him just just a breather for a moment, or I can't put this this linebacker in this compromised situation right now because you know he don't respond well if this happens or that." And, and, and it's going to come, you know, it, it's a feel too. And, you know, you, you don't get what you really want out of practice and scrimmages. You can only get what you really need when, when the game is really happening. And I think, you know, or at least I hope after this game, you know, we can, we can adjust a little bit better and, and, and make the better, better, better decisions when it's coming to play calling. Um, I, I love Trey Palmer. I think he's mm-hmm. he's got he's got great ability, um, but on the punt return stuff, wh- where are we on that? Because I mean, I look up and I see him blocking the gunner, and and then the first punt is fun. When when Palmer let the first one hit the turf, I said he's done. I said that that's it. Now we see Stingley, he's got to go back there. Uh, well, well, remember Derek Derek didn't practice all all camp, uh-huh. so. You know, so they've moved he, on. Condition? No, no, no. Okay. No, they haven't moved. Condition-wise, okay. you know, okay. he wasn't ready to to 
do it all, you know, mm-hmm. because he only had the freaking Hurricane Ida Houston trip to get ready for a game, which that's a whole nother story that we can get into on possibly why this game became what it what it was. But but he didn't practice during the training camp. So they were more concerned with his condition and, and, and the injury that he had leading up into it. It was a foot injury. So we wanted to really take care of that to make sure that, you know, he was going to be ready to play the position that he needs to play, which was corner. So, Is he good? But I mean, yeah, I, he's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's he's good. I asked him how he felt after the game. He he said it was a little tender, but it was something that he can probably play through. I mean, we should expect to see him back there, right? Um, I I I, I asked him that before the game, and he was like, "Yeah, he still returns punts, but he said he wasn't going to return them for this game." So when that's going to happen, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure it would probably be soon, if not this game, maybe next game. You mentioned that you could you could go into some stuff about last week moving to Houston. What what was your what was your thoughts on that? I mean, you you have to look at the fact that okay, the the, the whole entire southeastern part of the state suffered, and these players had to deal with the fact that they got to ride a ten to twelve hour bus trip to Houston although they had the day off after they got to Houston, but now they're basically out of their own comfort zone for a whole entire week with, you know, they didn't have to worry about us or meaning when I say us, meaning the family members, because we all were safe and LSU made sure that, that we all were safe. And that's another thing that people don't understand that LSU took care of the families to make sure that, you know, not say took care, but made sure that we were okay. Put it that way. Yeah. And now you got players out there to a point where they're away from what they what they're comfortable doing. They were uprooted to the point where now things are so much different. You're on a different time schedule. You're on, you're 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 basically it's almost like a bowl week, but a little more. Uh, how can I say more so like organized. Yeah, but it's like, okay, if they were home, let's say if they were all here in Baton Rouge, players would go to practice. They would go to practice, go to school, go to practice on their own, do as they want to do. But when you're with the confines of the team, now it's go to practice, go to meetings, be on lockdown, do this, don't 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 go here, don't do this. So now it's it's like, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but when you're used to certain things to the point where you have some time on your own to do as you want to do, not to say you're going to get into some bad things or do something crazy, but sometimes you don't want to be around a hundred guys 24 hours a day. You may want your own social life. You may want to just be, be alone, but now you got a roommate for sure, you know, within those seven, eight, 10 days, whatever it was, opposed to you having your own apartment, your own room, and you can go as you want, you can eat as you want, you can drive and go, go to a movie, go go do whatever. But now you can't. Now you're on an itinerary. You're on a schedule. You know, and then you got to sit on a bus, drive to wherever you're going to practice, and that's going to take time. Drive back from the practice, that's going to take time. Then you got to go and meet. So you can get exhausted from all that because it's just, always on the go opposed to you having the type of rest that you're comfortable getting things like that and then you got to jump on another plane and head out west and try to get acclimated to a certain time i'm not saying that any of that is bad that that's just what they had to do you know i thought lsu did a great job of getting all that organized and things like that but have you ever been in a situation to where this is what's normal and this is what <laughs> not normal Nine out of ten, the part that's not normal, you, you may not have the the result that you're looking for. I mean, there's a good chance that you won't. What do you expect the atmosphere to look like on Saturday for the home opener? I mean, r- r- with the the special fact that you know nobody's done this in in a year, people are looking to do this again. H- how do you think Saturday looks? Um. 
okay, I'm going to give you two answers to that. All right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the political correct answer that I would normally say. I, I truly hope that that the support would be like sold out, that it would be an atmosphere that we're accustomed to, that, that we're used to seeing, that, that brings the energy that everybody, you know, loves seeing tigers out there, the tiger walk, all that, the, the, the tailgating. That's what I would love, and that's what we would want, and that's what the players would need. I'm going to tell you my today thoughts hmm. because of all the, what they call them now, the, the that Sunday morning quarterback. Right, Monday morning. I can care less who show up to support. You think what? Because I can care less who shows up uh-huh. to support. I really could. Just from reading everything that they're saying about this team, our, my son, you know, it's, it's, and normally I stay away from stuff like that during, during this time of the year, but it's, it's just ridiculous, man. What, what ridiculous. has brought, what has brought you to that? Because I, you, you're right. I've never heard you be emotionally tied to that. I, I, what, what has brought you to it? Just... My, my son, the, the way my son felt after the game, uh-huh. he was really upset about the game. And then, just reading how people think that as if he didn't give maximum effort when he did all of that. Um, Claiming that, you know, he's probably checked out because of the NFL and things like that. All that stuff that if we wanted to check out, we could check out. And that's not want. that's not an option. I mean, it is an option, but is that that's not something that you want to do or him, right? No. Yeah. No. But be careful what you wish for. Mm. That's why I say people should be so lucky. Yeah. I hear a tone in your so, voice that I, I very rarely hear. Is this is this anger or is it more upset? A uh, combination of both. Yeah. Combination of both mm-hmm. because the, these boys they they didn't go out there trying to lose a game. And you heard me say boys, right? I didn't say men. Right. You know, because they're still growing. They're still trying to have the mentality of being men. But they are being led by men. So, and for everyone to come down on them, you know, that's the part that, you know, ticking me off. Because I've been here before. I've, 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 yeah, I've been a head coach in arena football. I've dealt with fans pressure people and I get it your fan have a right they all do that's that's their thing you know they pay whatever money they would pay they can cheer boo scream yell laugh do whatever but I'm a parent too yeah. I'm a parent and people know me I protect my thank uh, you for uh Thank you for allowing us in, just like you do every week. I, I know that uh, I, I, like I said, I've been knowing you for a long time, and the tone is is very much different this morning. So um, it won't always be like this, Jordy. No, I know. You're, you're, no, no, I know that. I know that. It's just it's it's interesting to hear you in the in, in that tone. I, I um, appreciate the so, candidness. Yeah, absolutely. I, we appreciate that because we. we I think uh, more. You know, not necessarily me. I'm your friend, so I, I I don't lose sight that you're his dad first. But I think people lose sight of that. I mean. At the end of the day, you're a parent first. I mean, I get, you know, exactly. I mean, um, mm-hmm. everybody is a fan of his. You are his dad. And so when mm-hmm. the fans speak, I, you know, I, I, I can relate to that, man. I, I have a son. I can't relate to, to, to the attention and what that brings, your son brings. But I mean, I, I know what it's like to be a protector. <laughs> and ain't nobody else going to talk about him. And I'm, I'm going to step up and, and, and defend. Um, right. And, that, and I tell Derek all the time, you know, don't, don't give anybody life. Don't, don't give. Those idiots are life. Sure, yeah. Because that's what they are. They're idiots. Don't um, give them life. Don't respond. None of that. Are you good coaches, everything? Co- I mean, you're, you're, I heard you say the, the coaches are the ones leading them. You're, you're, you're good on everything. Oh, uh, of course. Yeah. 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 Look, I'm, I'm not overreacting. I've never do that. Not, not to a game, you know, because it's not one play. It's, it's the entire game. It's, it's everything. It's all the ebb and flows of it all, you know. And... It was a tough week, man. It was a tough week. I think I read somewhere. I, don't know, I know Jordy Young at the time. No, no, no. I'm not, no, you're good. 
where, where Coach O, you know, after the storm, Coach O, you know, put out a statement, hey, you know, I'm paraphrasing, hey, you know, guys out in Houston, we're practicing hard, we're doing the best we can, you know, to bring back a victory. Then I read where people was like, why would he say that? And we're over here with no lights and no power, and he's talking about a football game, and, and we're, we're struggling with life, and, and, and we don't have this and that. Like, people's coming at him. But then they go out there and they don't come back with the result that people want. But now that's all that matters. I thought it was about everybody getting lights and having gas and having food and having a, a, a home that, that, that may have got damaged. But then it, it turns because why the, the unexpected happened. But when he was trying to say that he, they're preparing, they're doing their best to bring home a victory, that was like the worst thing he could have said. Mm. They didn't care about the game then, but then come Saturday, that's all that mattered. The food, the lights, the gas, your home, your well-being, your welfare, your mental capacity, your attitude, that doesn't matter now. It's all about football. I don't get it. Sting, thank you, man. Thank you for uh, for the time this morning, and um, you know it's all love. All love always is. I'll talk to you after this. I'll yeah. call you today. All Thank right, you, man. All right, man. Yeah. I'll see you. Uh, there's Derek Stingley, senior, checking in this morning. Uh, that's about as candid and open as an honest as a conversation yeah. I've had. Big fella just walked in. Uh, Rohan is here. We can hit that AC again uh, in here, please, Lizzie. Yes. yes, that conversation. What up, big fella? Uh, conversation with Sting, senior. There, brought to you daily here. Um, as we are always by Bear Specialty Meats. Remember Bear, stop in and see them. Highway 73 and in Baton Rouge on Jefferson Highway. Uh, they got a great freezer of selection. Remember this week, if you're looking to just throw something into the oven, get it moving, uh, hour and a half there, uh, everybody's going to eat. Um, stop into Bear's. Bear Specialty Meats. You can find them online, uh, all over Facebook, all over social media. It is good to be back here in South Louisiana. It's good to be home. Uh, when we are here, we hang out with uh, our friends, and one of them just walked in. Our guy, Rohan Davey, is here uh, after Saturday, and there's a lot to talk about. Missed you out in Cali, bro. The Cali life suits us well. Uh, <laughs> the the Cali amenities. life is, uh, is made for Joe and Ro, as uh, it, was, uh, it was a great trip. Everybody was getting their Rohan on out in, uh, out in LSU, out in, uh, out in L.A., uh, good to see you, baby. How was uh, how was your week? You did uh, you did some seven on seven this week, huh? Man, we did a little bit of everything this week, especially based on what was going on here and no lights and stuff like that. So it was a good week, except for the end, the end of the week. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, the uh, the game was the worst part of the trip for LSU. Where where, where do you start, Ro? I, uh, I I I banged a little bit on the 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 public relations of LSU football. In my opinion, is off. From the head coaching standpoint, when you're walking into the game and you're 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 going back and forth with the fans, um, some of the pictures that are out with the head coach just sends the wrong message. And then your team goes in there and you look unprepared, and a lot of the things that haunted you from last season still seem evident. Uh, I thought it was as bad as an opening week show as LSU could have probably put out there, but it is only one game, and you got to just kind of flush it and move on. Uh, what, what is your takeaway of where LSU is coming out of week one, and what was your 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 your, your um, assessment of, of, of watching them play. Oh man, um, one word embarrassing. Mm. Um, I mean, we, we talked about it. I knew UCLA wasn't a, a cupcake team. We knew that they were a, 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 a formidable formidable opponent, especially because shit, we just. Uh, we didn't do anything last year, so everything coming into this first game should have been a prove it, yeah, business like mentality. Um, I love the fact that how when they left here with the hurricane and went to Houston, that that made me think that they was in that mode of okay, we're trying to, you know, get in this bubble type of thing and just take care of business, come back and then you know assess what's, what went on here, lights back on, that type of thing. But, man, you know, you alluded to it a little bit ago, the pitchers, and, and, you know, it was kind of like a a ticker tape parade yeah. for Coach. And it, it was just um, – it wasn't 
the message I think that you want to send at the beginning of the season when you have so much to prove. You have so much on the line. You have a new quarterback. You have shuffling at the offensive line. You have, you know, it's just so much. So the, the focus, the focus for me wasn't there all the way around because it's not like we weren't in the football game and we could not have done a couple of things different coachingly to uh, propel us to a victory. Need to say if it wasn't a good showing or not. You know, games like that is for teams, you have to win a game like that if you're trying to rebound. Yeah. You have to go through that first hard one. Now, yeah, you know, it, it's uh, all the things are there. They played a game before, yeah. We didn't, yeah. We traveled, they, like, all that's there. I understand uh-huh. all that. But it's football. It's football. Uh, it's football. Them going to Houston didn't do anything from how they perform. Saturday, it didn't change anything in the coach's game plan from what they decided to do from going to Houston to getting there. So for me, man, it was a total meltdown from the coaches. It was uh, me. You've always heard me talk when at the beginning of the season, it's always a couple games coaches could win and and, yeah. and a responsible two or three for. games a season. You yeah, said, and yeah, and the first one is absolutely it. Mm-hmm. That's their biggest. Uh, Impact. Uh, test. Yeah, yeah. That, that, the first game because that's when you really got a coach, man, especially when you're going up against a team that's a Chip Kelly ready team. Chip Kelly out coached us. Yeah. Period. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Chip Kelly did things to put us in certain formations defensively that just exposed them. Expo- not, I mean, it exposed them, but it just shows so much confusion. It created so much. But that's what you get when you. And, I, and I'm not using it as an excuse. I'm using it as a, a, a coaching point that, that these coaches should have adjusted in some way to get, especially offensively, get out this three-by-one. We ran three-by-one the whole yeah. damn game. Get out three-by-one yeah. formation. I don't care if you put yeah. Besh on the end and put two. It's still three-by-one. It's still the same thing you're trying to create. Give me something else. Everybody keep talking about how we, 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 we couldn't run the ball and we didn't run the ball. Where was the effort to run the football? Or the commitment that, to that it. That should have been yeah. what – we get the ball out this dude's hands quick and pound, pound. It don't matter if you're just getting two. It don't matter if you're just getting three. Pound, pound, because you keep it honest. They, man, they, dude, they blitz this boy 70% of the game, man. Every third down, he was going to have pressure. We talk about the line not holding up. In my opinion, the line wasn't great, Throw a but screen. the line wasn't terrible. That's what I'm saying. The line would do things to slow him down. Give me a screen. Give me this. Give me that. Give me something to slow these guys down. If all you're going to do is stay in three by one, drop back, and sling it, then give me something else. Got to give me something else. Give me, a, give me a bubble. Give me something that's a semblance of a run play to try to get these guys in the flow of the game. I mean, when little, little cracks and little holes was there, Todd David Price hit the hole. Yeah. He was not, it wasn't a lack of not running hard. Mm-hmm. It was a lack of not having nowhere to go. We weren't getting any push. I honestly said that we weren't getting any push. But our picking up the blitz and, and, and the other thing was, man, we got to know where we're going with the blitz. I was a young quarterback. Max is a young quarterback. That's the hardest thing for us to grasp. When do you recognize that? When you pre-snap? or It has to be pre-snap. Uh-huh. It has to be pre-snap. You have to see him moving. You have to go over your keys. You have to see that safety backed up. Excuse me. You have to see the, the linebacker backed up by that safety and see him low and creeping in. But it was just not going to the right side. These guys were running the side adjustments. They was running the side adjustments, you know, coming off, going to the flat. They was running. They just weren't getting it. They just weren't. It just wasn't coming out quick enough for the side of just even even the pass that the third down to Batch that was high. Mm-hmm. That should have went straight in the flat to twenty seven. Might have been a bang bang, but it, it would have been right at the sticks for the first down. And those are little things in the in the process for a young Max that he's gonna have to get to. I'm sure that's one of the things the coaches are pointing out to him. Don't worry about the big blade. Let's do the little things. It's the little things we didn't yeah. do. That cost us this football game because I mean we were right up in the football game all the way until it was uh, like right yeah, in the third. Yeah. yeah, so it, it wasn't like we weren't in it. It's just coaches had to do some things differently, man, to put these guys in a better position to to finish. It wasn't a lack of these guys. Now sometimes it was a lack of effort. We did have effort issues at times, and guys thinking that oh he's going to make the tackle. Don't come over and make the tackle. Don't come over as fast. Now he breaks the tackle. Now we have to speed up again. So. 
We have to definitely, you know, when you come out of training camp, you come in, I'm not, I know it sounds like an excuse, but tackling is always an issue. Yeah. Run fits are always an issue. That's what you saw yesterday from those guys. Those guys on defense not trusting the other guy to make the play, not trusting the linebacker to come down in that B gap and fill that B gap correctly. Everybody was trying to make the play. And when you try to make the play, 24 skip skips out the back door. You know what I mean? So that's what was going on. Everybody was like on Velcro on defense, stuck to their guys, not getting mm -hmm. off of guys. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, defensive backs running into each other, seeing it late, coming down late. You know, it's still, it, it, in my opinion, it's still, it wasn't what you saw last year. Even though it was terrible, uh -huh. it's still, you didn't see guys running free. You seen guys chasing. Yeah. So that means late recognition. That means late getting a play. That means late seeing it, late communication, not in position, diff bad angles. Even on Stingley's play when he came up fast and got the tackle and it was like his first tackle again, he was out of position. It was a good tackle because he's a hell of an athlete, but his leverage was all wet. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So it was just all those little things, man, that contributed to this terrible, terrible debacle. And the coaches Ex are at the house. Ex explain to you, you were a football genius. Tyron Matthew is a football genius. He tweeted out Saturday night that LSU, he saw collectively, didn't win five plays because UCLA owned the leverage all night. All night. To, to, the, to, the, to the football fan out there that may not understand, what is he saying? What he's saying is everywhere that UCLA wanted to go with the football, running the football, it... Just, just, just think about the seventy-five yard touchdown play, uh -huh. the play action pass. If you watch that play from the back, ten guys went with the running back. Mm -hmm. Ten guys took three steps to and they're being my controlled left, their there. Right. They take and once they go there, you're dead. Now you're dead. That's right. Because all the line wants to do in the running scheme that Chip Kelly has is. They don't care where the defensive line goes. The offensive linemen do not care where the defensive line goes. They don't care if they go right. They don't care if they go left. All their job is to do is wherever they step, wherever they want to go, you latch on and you take them there. Uh -huh. Wherever, if he want to run left, let him run left. Take him left. It's on the back to see the cutback. It's on the back to find the lane. And he did an excellent job because we were out of position. So if my nose tackle is responsible for the A gap, which is right over the center, right where you get the ball. Now my... Middle linebacker may be responsible for filling the, this B or C gap, depending on what they have going on outside. Well, while they were running so successfully, even if it was five yards, 24, and then it, you, you, now you bring that into we're not tackling well. So we're, we're not hitting our run fits. We're not being physical on our run fits because we're hesitating on where to go. So now we're taking that false step. And them guys are getting up in there, man, and they they're locking it. Yeah, yeah, they locking it. It was one play I could have ran through there backwards. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was just those. And, and like to your point, all of that can be fixed. Uh -huh. The positive, all of that could be fixed. It was just an embarrassing effort on the part of the coaches, in my opinion, to not do anything else to change the trajectory. trajectory. And I'm speaking offensively of yeah. what was going to happen. Stay in the same thing. See, we did try to do, but we never just pound. I mean, all else fails. Run the, Run the ball down their throat, man. Yeah. This guy, you, you saw when Max got the ball out of his hands quick to these guys. These, you got explosive guys on the outside. Uh -huh. I don't care what anybody says. These guys are explosive. I know Bouti got most of the looks, but Jenkins was explosive. Palmer is explosive. These guys are explosive football players. Get the ball in their hands quick, man, and let them work. Yeah. What is the most concerning thing you saw? Honestly, like like you, you mentioned the run fits and the, that stuff can be fixed. But defensively, yeah, that could be fixed. I think that for me watching, because I definitely watch it through a quarterback's eyes uh -huh. and where young Max is right now, I think that he has to just hone in on the, the little details of the passing game. And, 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 and then when I say that, I mean he did a fantastic job of getting the ball out of his hands quick when everything was good. Mm -hmm. What he needs to do is when – because they're going to blitz him. That's going to be, that's gonna be the, 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 the thing with him yeah. now because they saw – one, they saw that he wasn't going to the right side on the side of this. That could be fixed. But you also saw, saw happy feet at times when and, – and, and, and I know – the blitz was coming, he's getting blitzed all night, and that's what happens. 
And if I was in his position, when I was in his position, I'd have been the same way. Absolutely. You know, trying to get the hell out of there. You're spooked. Absolutely. I mean, he was he Absol- just, I mean, you didn't know where it was coming from. That's before. what they tried. That's, that was the point. Yeah. That was the whole point. It's rattling. Yeah, the whole point. It was times they walked everybody up on the line of scrimmage six, seven times. The offensive line, that's that, that's that Joe Lee Dunn, Mississippi State junk uh-huh. where everybody's come up on the line of scrimmage. Fred and now, Smoot. Yeah, you don't know who's coming. So he's out there trying to declare a mic, identifying and sliding protection, and so is the, the, the center. Well, you got seven, eight guys on the line of scrimmage. Guys are coming back and out. It's all that for a young quarterback, young like I mean Chip Kelly did they did a really good job. Yep. They had a really good game plan and they executed it really well. Um I knew he was in trouble when he threw the ball behind his back. I was thinking he is he's he's rattled. He's just he's freaking out. Yeah, that 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 was was one of those plays that you don't want to see, but you do see it sometimes from a young quarterback. Um I remember a time when I played and I think somebody swung me around and I threw it to the sideline. And I actually saw the dude, though, the first time they swung me around. I knew he was going to be standing there. where he is. <laughs> yeah, I kind of knew, but I didn't, I didn't know I was going to get it to him. But I knew I was going to throw it hard in that direction and hopefully go over his head or he catch it. But right. I knew somebody was over there. Right. You know what I mean? I saw a person. This is always saving yeah. and catch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but he just got to do the little things, man. Get the ball out on the right side for the side of just uh, come out. Whenever you on, on your first play, take your first your first read, your reads there, hit it. Don't pass up an open guy to try to get the big play. You know, just those type of things. And I think he's gonna be fine. He's gonna turn out to be a solid quarterback. Uh when 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 what's the pressure of a, a first time play caller like? I mean what what is doing that for the first time? Well, it would have helped to have a cupcake under your belt. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So for him is also trying to figure out because it's, it's, it's for him, too, you know, trying to figure out what these guys – you kind of know what they do well, but you haven't seen them in this live situation, in the game situation. Uh-huh. So it's totally different. It's just like when you when – you, like for me, you guys be like, oh, Roe don't practice good, but he plays wrong. Yeah. So you have guys <laughs> that, like that, was, that, too. Was, that was a scout report. <laughs> you got guys like that, too, that practice well but don't play good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they try. They finding all that out. It's still a new coaching staff. They all in. Durante trying to find. And I'm not making excuses yeah. for none of them. Yeah, yeah. But they all trying to figure it out too. To be fair, and I, that wasn't the right team to try to figure it out about. And it wasn't the right coach to try to figure it out against. Yeah. Because Chip Kelly say what they want. Chip Kelly's a monster when yeah. it comes to offensive personnel and moving and scheming. Man, he's like a basketball coach where he finds your weakness and he attacks your ass. Yeah, yeah it's, I it. mean, he's not letting up. No, he is no. not letting up. That that's what I thought was most impressive was his patience, and then he just pounded him, yeah. finding a weakness and exploiting it. And he never went away from it. He never got too cute to where it's like, well, mm-hmm. why why would I stop running inside yeah. zone? Like I, I don't, they can't stop it. Exactly. He called probably five plays. And Dolchich, I mean the, the 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 tight end. I mean it was like, you guys aren't gonna. I mean Mike Jones. All I've heard about Mike Jones all his ability to cover. Is his ability to cover, and he can't get on the field with a guy like Dolchich in playing. I just want yeah, but you know I don't even understand that with that situation, man. Like you, you seen what the kid can do. Mm-hmm. Like you've seen him play, right? right. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like you seen him. And we're talking play. about Mike Jones. Yeah. We're not talking about Dolce. Yeah, exactly. No, Absolutely. You've seen him play. Hundred percent. Like my thing is like he's been there a month and a half. He's been on the field. I mean, what, what, what you've seen him play? Yeah. Uh huh. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, you got film on the boy. You know the boy could play. You know one of his things is the cover. So even if he, I don't know where he is and the maturation of the defense and all that, but even if he's not up to speed, you cover him. Right. <laughs> yes. Recess. Yes. Let me, absolutely. Let me, let me at least see. Yes. You know what I mean? Let, Mike, me, let, let me at least see. Run with him. Wherever yeah. he goes, yeah. you follow him. Don't worry about nothing else. All, all I'm putting you out here to do is follow him. Yeah. The big boy that's killing us. Follow him. <laughs> right. Take care of him right quick. Right. We're going to box him, one him. You know let's what I mean? just see like, if he can play. That's my point. Like, you, I mean. I mean, they were throwing everything else against the wall. Do you, do, you, do you think that this is a more of a problem with LSU trying to fit players into a scheme as opposed to using the players they have and using their strengths? Because, it may, it, like, they put that 4 5 out there and just stuck with it. Mm-hmm. Listen, You're like, this is what we're going to run. You know, I, I honestly don't – I don't because I don't know where they are in the maturation defensively. 
you know what I mean, of these guys. But, yes, it does seem like they're trying to force these guys to play. To which he the, wants which, four down linemen which, out there. Yeah, he does. And that, that like, you, if you don't have it for yeah. that scheme, you can't run it, man. It's the same thing we're doing with Bo Pelini. If you don't have it for that scheme, you can't run it. And you would think that two years in that you would at least have gone through that already and have a different game plan going into it. Now, like I said, you can at least see that the guys are a little bit better coach, but still all in all, you're still five yards, ten yards away from a tight end that's running, and you still letting a 6'5", 250-pound tight end go 75 yards. Yeah, That's a problem. Yeah. I don't care how talented he is. That's a problem. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Davey with us here in studio. Um, how good is Kayshawn Butte? How, I mean, how he good is He could possibly be the best receiver. He's one of the best receivers. He is ex- – that kid, something's wrong with that kid. I mean, <laughs> it couldn't – I ain't lying. It couldn't bring him down. <laughs> something wrong with that kid, man. He was the only – like, in my opinion, man, not just him, but he was the only real standout dog uh-huh. Saturday. For me, like, he was the, he was the one – and he was getting double covered. They kept that and, – and I know that was why part of the reason we stayed in that – three by one so long is because it really defined what they were doing. It defined that they had to the safety over top of Kayshawn and those other guys were supposed to go to work. But man, if 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 you're playing off and they're double teaming this guy, if we would have just kept getting the ball out quick, mm-hmm. throw a little screen, get the like every time he got the ball out of his hand quick it was a completion and they run after catch. You got these guys are run after catch receivers. Right. They're not guys that's going possession. No, yeah. these are run after catch these guys you playmakers. Got, you, yeah, you got a punt returner uh, uh, Booty also is a punt returner. Like, all these guys are explosive players, man. You got to get it out of his hands quick and get it to him, especially right now early in the season. If you did that the second half of the football game and pound the football, you win the football game, I think. You saw with, especially early with what they were trying to do on offense, where they would have Ty Davis Price come in motion to help declare and help see where these uh, where the defense would line up and, as opposed to where the running back was. If Correct. it was man or zone. But then LSU got out of that exactly mm-hmm. simply because they had to bring him in to block. And what do you think about Pete's getting the play in so late and not giving Johnson the ability to kind of look yeah, at Yeah, why was the play it's, clock getting so low down on the – It's what? the same thing we're talking about. It's new for him too. Uh-huh. It's, it's, it's him yeah. adjusting as well. It's him trying to figure out the right yeah. call. Yeah, 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 it's all that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely all that. We think that the coaches aren't immune to any of that. They're, they're not immune to – yeah. Oh, shit, oh, yeah. shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, yeah. yeah. shit. Yeah. 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 Exactly. What's your third down call? Yeah. Exactly, Jake, what's man. your third down call? Right. I mean, you know? We're putting. Yeah. No, yeah I'm right. serious. That's the, that's the difference, man. That's the difference between the great ones. And, you know, these some of these coaches are evolving. They're just getting into their strife. So you may be conceptually and, 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 and through thus far, you know, Climbing a ladder, climbing a ladder, and Coach Pease is, a, 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 I think, a really good offensive-minded coach. But he's still in the mix of where he's proving himself. He's still taking steps to prove himself and improve himself, and this is a new thing for him. So let's see, you know, and thus far, nah, that one note that he ain't passed the test last week. He ain't passed the test out of it. How do you manage the reps the next couple of weeks between Nussmeyer and Johnson? Obviously, Johnson Johnson's got to have them. Yeah. Johnson gets the reps. There's no you with him. You, he's there. Mm. That's your quarterback. You don't just now pull him out because that was coaching. You don't just pull him out. Now, he made it, He didn't play. If, if I had to grade him on the game, i say he played a C game. You know what I mean? Yeah. C minus. Right. Uh, just because of all the little things that I saw within the game that he just did not play well, period. He just did not. And I'm sure he would say the same thing based on the little intricacies of the game that he's controlled, that he has to control. So and it's being a young quarterback, it's the situation wasn't too big for him. Right. That's not what I'm getting at. Yeah. He just didn't play well. Yeah. That was that was it. When did you become comfortable as a star? When did you recognize pre snap blitzes? When did you recognize in the pocket that they're coming and I'm still I'm good? Did I mean not, you, not till my junior year. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, not till my junior year. He's I mean, he's a smart kid. He's definitely way ahead from where I was. That's you know what I mean? He <laughs> Far, far where I am. You know, the, how he came up, coach's uh, son yeah. in, in football, in Bezzle football. So he's, um, he's far ahead, Jay. He's far ahead. But he just has to do the little things that's, that changes the outcome. 
picking up that first down changes changes yeah. momentum. It changes field position. You have to get those guys feeling good, man. He has to get those guys feeling good about his play, feeling good about his decision making. Football and playing the quarterback position is all about decision making. Mm-hmm. And he has to get better at his decision making. Even balls that was like underthrown, the, the go route that he threw to Trey Palmer, that yeah. was a PI. Yeah. Gotta push that out of yeah. the way. Holding them yeah. a little too long. Kayshawn These guys broke off run. the line yeah. one time and he clicked it two These times. These guys could run. Yeah. Like he gotta let that out. Gotta just settle down. And he's going to. He's yeah. gonna be a good football player. I agree. Um Besh, Thomas, and Hilton all make catches. Yep. Um I thought they got away from Besh and, and Thomas a little bit. I mean, both those guys, you could see it. They they were eager for the ball. What did you make of the young wide receivers? Well, they played great. They played great. Ball came to them. They caught. That's, you know, part of what, listen, man, this, and I know I'm harping on the quarterback a lot, but it's because that's the engine. That's what makes it go offensively. And you saw Max lock in on one. Yeah. You saw him lock in, and, and that's part of the maturation. He's comfortable with him. They, they threw together, you know, yeah. when he wasn't the starter, when Kayshawn wasn't the starter. So they're definitely comfortable in, in a sync with And that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But he has to understand that a, a Brian, a uh, Bash, uh, these guys are next. You know what I mean? Like here, there's no, yeah, Kayshawn's a one, but all these guys are possibly ones later. You uh-huh. know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's not a, a, a drop off of, far as catching the ball and, 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 and making plays and things of that nature. So he just has to – it's the same thing I see on defense. He just has to trust the rest of them a little bit more. The same – probably not the same way you trust Kayshawn because as a quarterback, you always had that guy that you – you just know that's your guy, you know. But you can't force it to him. You can't stare him down. That's the other thing. He locked in too. He locked in. Never no head movements uh-huh. uh, during the course of the football uh-huh. game. Just locked in, and staring that's what, him down. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. staring him down a bunch, and all that's going to improve. Um, what's your level of concern around the the leadership of this program right now? Man, I'm. You know what? I'm really. Cons- I'm concerned that we that I did that we didn't see nothing change throughout the course of the game. I'm not like nothing glaring to. Let's make an effort to change the trajectory of where things are going. Like, UCLA, in my opinion, was comfortably whooping our behind the whole game. Uh Honestly. They felt like it it was their game. They dictated the game plan. They dictated tempo. They dictated the the, the, the way the game went. It never felt like... like, Unless you had any momentum or any control. Right. It never felt that way. It it felt like they were the favorites by 15. It did. It never felt like... We're gonna do something to turn or come back, or or even what they were doing was was a fluke. You know what I mean? It wasn't like you was catching bombs and no one's around. They falling down. Like they're hitting holes. They're pulling. They're creating holes. They're creating separations. They're scheming. Like they did everything that we would have hoped to do offensively coming into this game um, with the new OC, with the new defensive yeah. coordinator. You know right. what I mean? You yeah. expecting to see just something a little bit different, and even if just what is going to be different about you guys that what are you going to bring to the table different than what we saw last year? And for me, last year when we saw things going in one direction, it stayed in that direction. It was the same thing I saw Saturday when offensively we were stagnant and we weren't doing anything. Like, we didn't try to change. We didn't have, like, a backup. Okay, well, let's go ahead and bring this in and tighten this up and let's ground and pound and play action and we have these receivers. Like, it, it, to me, it doesn't it, – it, it's not – it's not really that hard for you to say, let me switch to something else. This hasn't worked for three quarters. At least let me come out of halftime with something else. Let me go in a no huddle. Let me do something to change what's going on. Get tempo, get you him never, in a rhythm. Yeah, you never saw that, man. You never saw that. Um, it is, uh, it, yeah, it, it's concerning to see that, 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 when you look at the same things that haunted this program a year ago, the same things happened. Did you have a chance to watch college football this weekend? I watched a little. Yeah. Did you see Bryce Young? Yeah. <laughs> I told you about Bryce Young. I know you bad. did, bro. He's the best one he's had. I know. He looks so smooth. We were out in L.A., and that's his, that's his spot. That's his you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody was talking about that. Now, uh, he's a monster, man. I, I, I said that when I saw him come in and when they picked him up, because I've been seeing that kid since Elite 11. And the one thing that the kid does not lack for, and you can't lack for at that position, I don't care what happens to that boy. Confidence. 
his confidence never <laughs> wavers, dude. And he knows he's a monster. Yeah. That's the other thing about him. You know who I compare him to, but just a, a farly better passer of the football is Cam. I think his size is like Cam. He's, he's that big. Yeah, that kid ain't big. He said he's six one one ninety five. He's big. Big old boy. Shit. Good God. That he's corner good. route he threw for the ninety five yarder what was his first touch so man? fun. How he looked at Mechie the whole time, and everybody's biting on Mechie, and he drops it to that backside cat. You, man, that's that's you know what I'm saying. Like you see that. I manipulation. It, that's all it's about. That's all I teach in seven on seven with mm. the quarterbacks. You got to be able to, and it, and it's and it's a lot of people think you don't even have to stare them down. Yeah, it's just stopping them from taking that first step in Tilt that direction. That that's it. All you want them to do is pause for a half a second, because that half a second he can't get there. Mm-hmm. It's no, I mean, unless you damn Deion Sanders or Sean Taylor, mm-hmm. which you can't get there, or the Honey Badger, you can't get there. You know what I mean? When you look at the OSU offensive line, how do you how do you fix it? It seemed like it was irreparable damage. It especially you wanted to see, you wanted to the see first run. Thing, the first thing they got to do with that line is take t- all of them big guys that got towels on their side and on their behind, take it off of them, except for the center. He's the only one that needs. You talking about because they want to look good? Yeah, they they are yeah. not they they are not. They're not skill players. Yeah, you are road graders, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I been seeing them out there with yeah. the short spat tape. With the t- Come, man, you are a road <laughs> grader, man. I want the Stephen Petermans. I want them, man. I yeah. want the fan. I want them boys that don't care about uh, my rich uh-huh. bands and my, uh-huh. you know I all black. that. You know what I'm dogs. Like, I want you. Yeah, I want you in this mud, man. That's where we get it out this mud. I don't care nothing about that. And we go have steak dinners on Tuesday. That's the mentality they need to get in. We like it's too, it's just too much of this, man. It's too soft. It's too soft. That's why we couldn't run the ball. Now they, I, listen, like I said, everybody was on them about they. I think they pass protect decent compared to being blitzed as much times as they uh-huh. was being blitzed. Yeah. I think they did a great, a damn good job. Of They're outnumbered, the of course. And that's why I said that, Mac. See, when you blitzing them. It's not just them picking it up. There's always gonna be somebody free yeah. when they bring in four off of side. You can only bl- if you if they bring if you're in a six man protection and they bring seven, one's gonna be free. You know what I mean? So it's up to that's why the quarterback and the run and, and excuse me the offensive line got to be in sync. One's gonna be free. I got to be looking to that right side. I have to identify the right man and my guys. My now the receiver has to break it off correctly. And they were doing that consistently. Consistently, the wide receivers were doing that consistently throughout the night. We just weren't going to the right side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So great teaching opportunities no on this film. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. This is a, this is a great tape for everybody offensively. Coaches, Max, the offensive line, like all of them. We just couldn't move anybody, man. Mm-hmm. We couldn't move anybody running the football. It seems like they don't really trust the running backs out the backfield to, to be well, able to throw. They didn't trust the ones on Saturday. Yeah, to be able I mean, to throw they, the ball for them. No Goodwin, no Kiner. Emery's not dressed. I mean, people are looking in the media guy to find out who 27 is, and that's right. no disrespect to no, him. No, 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 right. When, when, when you're talking about all camp, about guys like TDP and John Emery and Corey Kiner and Armani Goodwin, I mean, and then you get to the first game and those guys aren't there, it's – where is the run game? Where is the threat out of the backfield? It just That's what I'm saying, because when they bring all this pressure, what's the easiest thing to call is, is, is a screen or just a little swing pass that you can dip off, let them come at you and flip it over their head. And it seemed like LSU had a plan to, because they didn't trust they got to catch the ball. Why well, don't, could you bring thing. in like I, a... This, and I hear, I, this is the thing. It's coaching, man. Hey, dog. Everybody talking about you got all these running backs. These running backs, you recruited them, you gave them a scholarship. They're all different kinds of running backs. Dog, they can catch. Right. They can run. You understand what I'm saying? They just not just didn't come here and now they can't run or catch. Got to put them in a position to succeed. You got to put them in a position. You got to make a commitment to them. Put them in in and say, do it. Yeah. Just put them in. Yeah. I mean, like, that's what they came here for. They came here to play football. Like, give them the opportunity to do what you brought him here to do or give him the opportunity to show you that they can't do it it's not practice practice is not where you judge players you get your time and how you play far as like where you are in a pecking order uh-huh. in practice mm-hmm. but in the game if i got a third a, th- a back that's fourth on the depth chart but something happens with number one and i have to put him in a football game and he has done nothing in practice but he's flashing like crazy in the game. 
He's going to move up. Make a coaching decision. Yeah, he's going to move up. He's going to be, well, you know what? This kid loves the lights or something. It's something about the kid that he turns up when the lights come on. Yeah. So I'm going to give him the opportunity to at least see. That's why last year when everybody was, when we were losing and, and we weren't playing, we didn't start playing the, fre- the rookies or freshmen until yeah. like late in the season. That's why I was like, from the beginning of the season, you know the season wasn't going to be nothing. Play everybody. Play them in game situations. See how they react. See how they don't react. See if this five-star yeah. really can Tightens do up. that. Yeah, you got to do it, especially when you have the opportunity and nothing's on the line. Last year was a mulligan season. That's why now you know how Elias Ricks is going to play. You know how these guys now are going to That's why you had so much promise coming into the year because you played them guys late and you found out what they were. But if you play them all the way early, offensively, play everybody, man. Yeah. If we lose three more games this season, play everybody. Yeah. When you see what they did in, in 2019 with the offense and bringing wide right receivers into the backfield, which I thought was something that was very you know intuitive because you can then use them in different ways. It creates a, a multitude of matchups. I don't, do you see them maybe moving toward that? Because there's reports of Butte lining up in the backfield in practice. Just getting the ball. And get him just to be able to get him out in space because if they're going to blitz like that, because that seems to be the game plan now. If you but if you watch that tape, every defense they're coordinator gonna is going to blitz gonna, him. So is of there course. a way to get a wide receiver back there just so you I like, mean, you don't even have to – You that, that could be part of a game plan. That could be part of it. But this is my thing with it. You can throw other screens. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can throw screens to the running back. I'm sure all of them have caught over 100 yeah. screens in the history of them playing their football throughout their life. Talking about they can't catch. They can catch screens. Mm-hmm. The same receivers we talking about could catch bubble screens. They could catch radar, lava, the same stuff Josh Reed used to catch. They're faster than him. Like, there's, there, it's not it, – it's on the coaches, man. It's on them to figure this shit out. It's not, it's not on the players to say – okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do this. Because that's what's going to happen. Players are going to start trying to do too much. Mm -hmm. Because we're not now in this position. We know that they're blitzing and they're not doing this. We're not doing that. Because these players nowadays, this is what it's going to. This is how they talk. This is how they're they're very in tune and they're very smart. Kayshawn Bouti is a very intelligent football player, even though he's he's a young guy. These guys know football. I mean, you don't think these running backs know the running back position if they listen to Kevin Falk? <laughs> you don't think these defensive yeah. ends know what the heck to do? You got an Andre Carter putting clothes on, putting his uniforms on to go out there and show you reps. So this is what I'm saying. It's not like these coaches, and I know I've been hitting, it's not like they're not coaching. It's not like they're not putting the time in, spending the time. It's not for lack of time. It's not, right now it's for lack of change of philosophy. Have me another plan going into it when it's not going right. The first game is tough, man. It's tough when you play the game, when you play the team that's already played, and a talented UCLA team with a damn Chip Kelly. 100%. You know? Yeah, I mean, at one, you know, like I said on Saturday, at some point you got to give UCLA credit. Man, yes. they should beat LSU up. They out-schemed them, and they out They were better prepared than them. They were. They um, were. And and you got Oregon going up at Ohio State week three. I mean, the Pac-12 could be. Looking good. Yeah, the, 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 uh, Oregon didn't look good again. Didn't look good week one. You could have a Pac-12 championship at uh, UCLA. Um, yeah. We we saw Ricky Collins play the Jamboree, yeah. which they came back and won that game at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I was out in L.A. on Friday. Jack and Noah went to Lafayette and watched Walker right. Howard take on Madison Prep, which looked like an instant classic. Prep wins the game Prep at wins. the buzzer tough, on, a, on a field Seems goal. Yeah. Walker looked like he got a little banged up, but he made every single throw. He made every play. He's such a catchable ball. He throws a such a catchable ball. He can read the line of scrimmage so well. That's what you're talking about, Max. Yeah. He, I mean, he can see it at the high school level. It's yeah. just like, I know I'm calling protection. I'm calling out of this. He can read one to jump. For Barry Brady, you know how Brady's so good at just going for saying, yeah, probably three of them. I know he lost one of his receivers with strep throat. He no. doesn't have any receivers, uh-uh. though. Dropping ball. He doesn't have any receivers. No, he has no threats. He has no receivers. And that's not, it's not a knock on the kids right. that's there, but look what, look what left. You right. know what I mean? Exactly. He, too. I, exactly. he has legs. No, the boy, can move. The boy yeah. is a player, man. He's an athlete. Yeah, the boy could play. Yeah. And that's the, the, I think, to me, that's the, the underrated thing about Walker. I mean, Walker's a 4'6 guy. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Four, six, no, we read his God. testing numbers off. When he tested it at the same time as more, we were like, holy shit. 39-inch vertical. I mean, yeah, no, he's an athlete. Yeah. yeah. He's an athlete. He's an athlete. And the biggest, and to your point, you're right. He can make, he, 
understands when to make all the throws. Mm-hmm. Like he understands trajectory, he understands placement. Yeah, He's so ball. accurate, dude. He's a monster, man. Uh, he threw a fourth quarter touchdown, that one you guys posted yeah. on social media where He's about at the 30 yard line and he drops a seam route. Like, I mean, it's a C. The ball is never 12 feet off the ground. And I mean, it hits the guy on a dead run in his ear hole. You know what I tell you about that boy? Throw it through a car wash. Don't get wet. Baby. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> dude, he zips it. I still love us. Zips seven, it. Seven on Madison Trap. That kid is something. Your boy. Your boy. Oh, my your boy. God. That kid's a dog. I love that guy. Hey, Don, that, what is, it, what is it? Danny. Dave, oh, Dave, 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 you get ripped Dave, up by Dave. Dave, Dave is a dog. Dave is a monster. Dave is a Listen, dog. Number for seven for Madison for Prep. Y'all, for y'all that don't Woo. know Dave. Dave was a defensive back. What, do we know his last name? Because I want to give him the, the right. We're going to yeah. get yeah. Dave on yeah. here, baby. Yes. We're going to get that boy on here. Yes. Listen, Dave's biggest thing about him, though, man, is he's a super athlete, super competitive, and all that. Slipper, man. But that kid <laughs> is when he hits you. Oh, he, he came up and had Ricky on that first. Know, yeah, he, he gonna kill Ricky. Baby. Hey, <laughs> boys, like a time. I mean, he just explodes, baby. I call him baby honey badger. He, yeah, he kind of is. That, he honey loves. He, that's who he loves. Well, too. he's tough like that. He like he come him. up and hit. He don't hit the ground. No, 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 no he no. stays up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, he yeah. gets up. He's always yeah, yeah, chopping yeah, and yeah, barking. And it was fourth quarter of under a minute left. I he had a corner out, and he smoked. And I'm like, well, this kid's dead, and he just pops up. He's like, let's go, let's go. He's hey. Johnson. Oh, my God. I mean, he is an <laughs> animal. He's an animal. I love seven. They're and look, Quint, everybody's, oh, Quincy's man. bringing everybody to the, to the, to the game, and, it, and rightfully so. I mean, seven. two looks like the number one pick in the NFL. <sighs> but when you start watching prep and you start digging into their Dude. roster, they are – they got, they got dogs players, everywhere. Yeah. They do. They do. The linebacker's good. Yeah, they the do. middle's good. Um, that defense good. They wear you down. That that defense, offense is Because, man, you can't stop Z. Uh, Z uh, the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Z always falls he, forward. Yeah. Always falls forward, and then he's such an And athlete. makes the play when the play has to be made. Oh, he's he makes it. He's a play. Yeah, he makes over. it. It's over. Uh, big week for McNeese. Big week for Micah Davey. Big week. They're coming down here. What's that, what's that like? Um... When you're playing for a school like McNeese and you see LSU struggling, that, that gives you a sense of, I mean, they, they probably have some bounce in them this week, huh? Either have some bounce or be like, oh, hell. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's going to be a long night. Yeah, right. Right. That's right. You know, That's right. You're probably right. Them, they got their own issues. You know, they lost a close one uh, last week. So they're coming. They have some things that they have to improve on. Ogeron's uh, boy played well. Uh-huh. He had a really, he had a good game. Um, but they have some things they got to tighten up on defense, man, and the offensive line. They got to tighten up a little bit. So it'll be interesting. They have some things to work on. I think Frank's doing a good job, uh, definitely. But they got some things that they got to work on now. Now their first game. Uh, Roe will be back later in the week. We'll start to preview that matchup. We'll have a plan on Saturday. Uh, stick around after I got some uh, presents for you that I picked up over in California uh, that I will show you. Um, thank you for everybody. One. Thank you for everybody for being out there today. Uh, make sure and like, sh- uh, like, comment, and share on the post. Uh, we will be back with you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. We're going to talk to Frank Wilson at 7.30 tomorrow morning, so we'll get a preview from uh, head coach for McNeese on the Cowboys as they make their way to Baton Rouge on Saturday. Uh, thank you for being out there. Go Chevrolet drives us every day for Rohan. And for uh, Derek Stingley Sr., uh, Jordy Collada, Jack, and Lloyd signing off on this Monday. We'll talk to you at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning.